Chapter 721 to 1 The Truth Iris looked at Nora and then at Justin. Nora had only said that she would attend the Orchid exhibition, she hadn't revealed anything else to Justin at all. Even when they were on the way to the Orchid exhibition, she had only said that she could save the ghost orchids. She hadn't revealed that she was Orchidians. Therefore, Iris had always been skeptical about whether Nora could cure the ghost orchids or not. But Justin had trusted her very much. Was that how it felt to be mutually trusting towards each other? When she thought about it carefully, she actually didn't have a single person she could trust in her life, which was rather sad. If she really had to think of one, then perhaps she had only trusted that one person. Thinking of this, Iris cast her eyes down. She pointed to the greenhouse next to them and said, let's talk inside. Because she wanted to like orchids, she had ended up really becoming fond of them. When she was gardening and taking care of the flowers, she was able to truly abandon all distractions and concentrate on work. Therefore, Iris had really fallen in love very much with orchids over the years. Her heart calmed and became peaceful after she entered the greenhouse. She sat there quietly and picked up the teapot that Mrs. Landis had prepared at the side. Then, she poured three cups of tea and put them on either side of the coffee table. Sunlight streamed brazenly into the glass conservatory, making the place look warm and toasty in the cold weather. The white coffee table and seats added a bit of rustic elegance to the place, making one feel as if they could really become at peace with the world just by sitting in there. Iris' gaze fell onto the orchids next to them, but she didn't speak, seemingly in a struggle over how to start. At this time, Justin asked, is it related to the kidnapping back then? Iris was taken aback. She looked at him. Justin said indifferently, when I was five, a woman I didn't know suddenly showed up at home and told me to call her mom, but I refused. After that, I was kidnapped. Justin cast his eyes down. Later, I met a man. He got into a tussle with the kidnappers, so I took the opportunity to escape and returned home according to the route I remembered. I've always thought that I managed to escape because I was smart and seized the right opportunity, but now that I think about it, why did that person so coincidentally enter a confrontation with the kidnappers at that time? You were the one who sent him, right? Iris pursed her lips tightly before she finally nodded. You can say that. Justin continued with his analysis. After they kidnapped me, they wanted neither money nor manpower. It was clear that they wanted to kill the hostage. On top of that, they also wanted me to die a distance away from home. At that time, the Hunts were already one of the largest families in New York, yet even they couldn't find me. In that case, who did you seek help from? Iris bit her lip. Justin stared at her, light flickering in his deep-set eyes. Or should I say, who did you beg for help? That person you begged for help is the one who imprisoned you here in this small villa, and also forbade you from being with me, right? Iris exclaimed, how did you know that? Do you already know who he is? I don't. Justin said dispassionately, ever since I realized that you have reasons for doing what you did, all these years, I have been wondering what on earth those reasons are. At first, I thought that you had made some kind of agreement with Herman, but after he came back, I realized that that wasn't the case at all. You have never feared him, so how could you possibly make such a ridiculous agreement with him? Besides, you have always been afraid of giving me trouble all these years, so you always rejected the Evanses every time they approached you for anything. Therefore, it is impossible for you to harbor thoughts of usurping the hunt's assets. Grandma also doesn't seem to be on guard against you. After thinking about it, that is the only possibility left. Iris' eyes reddened. Since Justin had started the topic, she picked up from there. She said, my marriage to your father is a political marriage between wealthy families. The one he liked was actually Yvette Anderson. I know all of that, so I've never blamed him for cheating, because I have never loved him either. However, he went too far. I'd already given them my blessings and left the family, yet they neglected you and caused you to be kidnapped. Everything related to the kidnapping has already been erased by now. I suspect that it's Lauren's handiwork and that she had colluded with that group of kidnappers, but I don't have any proof. That time, after I came back from my trip overseas and discovered that you were gone, I begged the Hunts and the Smiths for help. At that time, Nora's father was still the head of the Smiths. 
Mr. Smith helped me to search for your whereabouts, but unfortunately, there was no news of you at all. By then, it had already been more than 12 hours since your disappearance. If I still couldn't find you, there was a very high chance that they would kill you. So, I had no other choice. I could only approach him. Iris clenched her fists tightly at the mention. Her eyes were full of hate towards Lauren. Justin suddenly asked, Who is he? Iris sighed and shook her head. To be honest, I don't know either. Justin and Nora exchanged a look and both frowned. However, neither of them raised any questions because the look in Iris' eyes had started to become distant, and she was already starting to go down memory lane. She said, I met him in college. He was my first boyfriend. Her simple few words stunned the two of them. He was her first love. Then why didn't she know who he was? While they were thinking about it, Iris said, when we were still studying, he was a poor boy named Philip Coleman. At this point, Iris looked at Justin. It was inevitable that she would feel a little embarrassed mentioning her first love in front of her son and daughter-in-law. She lowered her head. I met him at a dance party. He fell in love with me at first sight. After that, he tried to woo me for a very long time. Among all the rich youngsters, he was very unremarkable, but for some reason, he was the only one who caught my eye. After we graduated, my family wanted me to get engaged with Herman for the political marriage. Iris' voice was a little serious and burdened when she mentioned that. After a while, she finally heaved a huge sigh and said, it's actually a very cheesy story. My family was driving me into a corner. Mom was seriously ill, but Dad refused to pay for her high medical expenses unless I agreed to the marriage. I had no other choice at that time, so I broke up with him. At this point, Iris looked at Justin and gave him a wry smile. He had been pretending to be a poor boy in school because he was worried that people would be attracted to his money, whereas I happened to be in need of it. The two of them had let each other slip by perfectly. Iris sighed. Both he and I were relatively self-restrained people, so the breakup went smoothly. After that, your father and I got married. Everything was fine until one day, your father said that a foreign businessman had come to America and was holding a party. He wanted me to attend it with him. She hadn't expected to meet Philip again at the party. Philip was the foreign investor at the party. Everyone was trying to please him because they had heard that he was from a foreign wealthy family. Even though the Hunts and the Smiths had already reached the pinnacle in America, there was another family in another country that loved doing business very much. They had been merchants for generations and had amassed a lot of wealth over the years. People like them had always been low-key in their behavior. Even when he was out, he used a pseudonym. Philip Coleman was not his name, it was just the pseudonym he used in America. She had never known his true identity. At the party, Philip found an excuse to corner her. Iris knew that Herman was someone who hated being embarrassed, so she said, my husband doesn't know about my first love. Please don't tell him about it. At that time, Iris' belly was already showing slightly. She had given all her love to the baby in her womb. At that time, the way Philip looked at her had changed. He let out a sarcastic laugh and said, I have never been acquainted with Ms. Evans before. Nice to meet you. When he said that, Iris had felt like someone had suddenly gripped her heart tightly. What she thought was a peaceful breakup was still capable of piercing her heart two years later. She put on a graceful smile and nodded at Philip. But after she turned around, she was unable to maintain the smile on her face. However, Philip would appear in her life again. Philip became good friends with Herman and visited them at home. Herman had pointed to Iris' belly and said to Philip, Philip, he'll be your godson in the future. At that time, Philip had looked at Iris pointedly and remarked, I'm so envious of you for having such a good wife, Herman. Herman asked, aren't you married yet, Philip? Philip shook his head and immediately said, I have someone in my heart I can't forget, no other woman can capture my eye. When he said this, the look in his eyes as he stared at Iris had been persistent and terrifying Herman, however, was still unaware of what was happening. He said, oh, then why didn't you marry her? Philip lowered his head. I had concealed my identity at the time, so she thought I was poor and went to someone of higher social status instead. Herman cursed the woman for being materialistic and shameless. 
Iris flushed as red as a tomato as she listened to them from the side. Philip, however, said, it is instinctive to pursue a better life, so I don't hate her. In fact, if she is ever in trouble in the future, I would still be willing to help her. Herman had immediately given him a thumbs up. You sure are magnanimous, Philip. Philip then said, my family also has a lot of secret properties in America, it's just that most people don't know that. If you ever run into trouble in America, I can also be of assistance. Herman hadn't thought much about it at the time and had thought that those words were directed at him. At once, he started chatting and laughing happily with Philip. However, Philip's attitude suddenly became cold and he left. Since then, he had never stepped into America again. It was only later that Herman finally understood why Philip had fallen out with him back then. After he left, Iris had let out a long sigh of relief. She admitted that her decision had betrayed Philip back then, but Philip had also hidden his family background from her. Wasn't that also a form of deception towards her? Their relationship had ended without any real reason. They were ultimately just not meant to be. When Justin was five years old, Philip had called her. He was still using the same phone number he had used when they were in college. Iris answered the call. At that time, she had already found out about Herman's cheating, so she was in a bad mood. Philip had only asked her a question on the phone, do you regret what you did? Did she regret what she had done? Occasionally, in the dead of night, Iris would think of Philip. If she had been a little more firm and resolute back then, and if she had lived as unrestrainedly and happily as Yvette had, then would her life have been better. But every time the thought formed, she would look at Justin. Although she didn't love Herman, Justin was the greatest gift that God had given her. She loved her son more than anything in the world. Mom, buy me harder Lego sets next time. These are too easy. Her son with a super high IQ made a request with a frown. Iris immediately smiled and said into the phone, I have no regrets. She hung up the phone. Afterward, when Mrs. Hunt made her choose between tolerating Herman or doing something else, she had decided to be selfish for once. Perhaps her rebellious streak from college times had come too late, but she decided to file for divorce. She dragged her suitcase behind her and left the house. After that, Herman had brought Lauren home. After she came back from her trip and learned that Justin had been kidnapped and was missing, she had felt like dying. Even with the Hunts and the Smiths' power, they couldn't find Justin. At that time, she had panicked. Her five-year-old son, no matter how high his IQ, was still just a child. If the other party was determined to kill the hostage, then he would probably have already become a corpse by then. She didn't dare to wait any longer. In her panic, she inexplicably thought of what Philip had once said. My family also has a lot of secret properties in America, it's just that most people don't know that. If you ever run into trouble in America, I can also be of assistance. She dialed Philip's phone number with trembling fingers. The man seemed very hesitant, only picking up the call after it rang for a very long time. The man smiled and said, do you need something? It's my wedding today. The groom can't be absent, you know. Iris didn't have the leisure to care about such things. Besides, so many years had already gone by, her feelings for him as her first love had already faded a long time ago. She immediately asked, can you save my son? Philip was startled. What happened? Iris recounted the story. At last, she asked, aren't you very powerful in America? Can you find him? Yes, I can. Philip was very confident. But why should I help you? Why should he help her? Iris had been stunned then. Indeed, why should he? While she was in a daze, Philip said, I'll give you two choices. What? The first one, fly over to my wedding now. I am still missing a bride. Iris thought that he must be out of his mind. She said, my son is missing. Philip, I am not in the mood to joke around with you. I'm not joking. Philip chuckled and said, why should I help you for no reason? Iris bit her lip. At last, she took a deep breath and said, I can't agree to your request. I will never leave my son's side ever again. Because she had gone overseas for a holiday, Justin had gone missing. Her son needed his mother after all. She must not leave him. 
Moreover, her relationship with Philip was just puppy love during college. Compared with reality, she cared more about Justin. She started to cry. Her voice was choked with sobs as she said, Philip, please, I'm begging you. The other end of the call was silent for a long time. In the end, Philip sneered and said, I can find him for you, but you have to promise me something. Tell me what it is. Philip enunciated every word carefully and said, You can watch over your son, but I forbid you from ever getting close to him for the rest of your life. You can only look at him from a distance. Iris, this is your punishment for betraying me back then. Okay, I promise you that. Later, Iris and Herman got divorced, Herman was kicked out of the house, and Justin became the new leader of the clan with his grandfather grooming him ever since. As for Iris, she could only hide in the villa. She could still remember the last few words that Philip had said to her. His voice was very cold and missing any trace of emotion. He said, since you have agreed to my condition, then you must keep your word. Otherwise, you know what I'm capable of, I will spare no costs to kill your son. I can save your son's life, but I can also easily crush him like an ant. Even now, Iris still didn't know who Philip really was. Mysterious families like his kept their identities very well hidden. She couldn't make any contact with them at all. All she knew was that if she stayed away from Justin all her life and maintained a distant attitude toward him, then she would be able to guarantee his safety. Therefore, that was exactly what she had been doing all these years. The story was over. There was no bloodshed nor intense love and hate. It was so plain and bland. In fact, when Iris mentioned Philip, she no longer felt any love for him but only fear and thoughts of her agreement with him. Iris looked at Justin. The world's top families can control the world economy and are very terrifying existences. I have distanced myself from you all this time because I'm afraid they would destroy you in the hunts the moment they decide to take action. To be honest, my life here all these years by myself has been very comfortable. Aging and dying alone can also be considered a kind of happiness. Justin, you wanted to know the truth and I've already said it, but I don't want you to pursue it any further. Back then, I was the one who had let him down. After that, I even asked him to find you for me. He gave you your life, so let's just leave it at that. Seemingly because she had come clean about everything that had happened back then, Iris breathed a sigh of relief. She lowered her head. You don't have to become enemies with him for my sake. After all, I am already an old woman in my autumn years. After she said that, she slowly closed her eyes and sighed deeply. Nora looked at her. She was actually very shocked, though she pretended to be nonchalant on the surface. When Iris was young, she must have been very gentle and a big pushover, right? That was why she had given in to her family's arrangements back then. But was her mistake really so big? Didn't Philip hold any responsibility for why they weren't together? They had already been in a relationship for several years, so why didn't he tell her his identity and his background? Also, weren't there a few too many powerful people in the world? The mysterious organization's forces already spanned throughout the world, and now there was another mysterious megacorporation. All her life, she had only been concerned with sleeping every day and also felt that it would do as long as she made enough to survive. It was only now that she suddenly realized that she was actually so poor. While Norris' imagination was running wild, Iris' cell phone suddenly rang again. It was still that same unfamiliar number. If Nora wasn't wrong, then he was likely Philip. Chapter 722 Opponent Sure enough, at the sight of the phone number, Iris' pupil shrank slightly and fear arose in her again. She wanted to pick up the phone and switch it off, but before she could touch it, a big well-defined hand took the phone. Iris' head whipped up abruptly and she looked at Justin incredulously. Justin looked at her firmly. His voice was calm and steady, and he seemed capable of protecting Iris from everything in the world. He said, let me. Iris shook her head. She was very scared. Although the hunts were powerful, they were really no match for globally powerful families that had hundreds, even a thousand of years of history. She swallowed. Justin, forget it. Justin could understand her fear and panic. His mother was worried that she would affect the hunts because of her own affairs, but she didn't know that he had another identity that was powerful enough to make him fearless. 
It was just that due to certain reasons, he couldn't reveal that identity of his. He lowered his head and said, Mom, don't be scared. After saying that, he picked up the cell phone, got up, and answered the call. A deep and pleasant male voice traveled over through the phone, Iris, you have broken our agreement. Nora stood beside Iris. She held Iris' shoulders and looked fixedly at Justin. Justin said into the phone, from now on, I will be the one to fulfill that agreement. The original agreement was that Iris would age and die alone in the suburban villa as punishment. If she couldn't restrain herself and got close to her son, then Philip would take action against the hunts and Justin. When Justin said that he would fulfill the agreement, the man immediately understood what he meant. Philip sneered, hey, that weak little boy from back then has grown up and become independent, hasn't he? In that case, I'll teach you how to behave. As soon as he said that, Iris panicked. She rushed forward and shouted, Philip, come right at me if you want. Don't do anything to the child. You. But before she could finish, Philip snapped, Iris, that's enough. Iris was taken aback. Philip smiled and said, aren't you just saying that because you're very sure that I won't do anything to you? Now that the kid has grown up, you can't blame me for being nasty anymore. He hung up right after saying that. Iris. The disconnected tone from the phone resounded in the depths of her heart like the bangs of a drum, making her feel terribly flustered. She swallowed and looked up at Justin, feeling like she had become the sinner of the hunts. The most mysterious megacorp was about to take action against her son. Iris grabbed Justin's arm. She wanted to say that she would go and apologize to the other party, but when the words reached the tip of her tongue, she couldn't bring herself to say them because if she did, then it would be no different from her throwing her own pride onto the ground and trampling on it. Iris took a deep breath. Just as she was filled with worry and trepidation, she saw Justin walk around her and look at Nora. He asked, Nora, are you scared? Nora raised her brows. The hunts had offended the most mysterious megacorp in the world, which sounded pretty exciting. Also, if Justin really lost everything, then wouldn't Pete's status as the next head of the family become useless? But, she broke into a grin and raised her eyes slightly. It's okay, if you go bankrupt, I'll support you. After saying that, she spotted Iris, so the rest of her words did a U-turn in her mouth and she added, guys. Justin. He'd originally intended to tell her not to be scared, but he hadn't expected Nora to say something like that. Suddenly, it made him really feel like going bankrupt for fun. It seemed like it wasn't that bad an idea to have a sugar mommy and be kept as a lover. Ahem. Iris looked at the two of them, suddenly finding herself speechless. This must be love. If she had trusted Philip back then, things would not have come to where they were. Now that she thought about it, so what even if she had to fight to the death with her family back then? At most, she would have just started all over from scratch. The woman, who was nearly 50, was moved by the love between Nora and Justin. This inspired the greatest fighting spirit in her. She said, okay, if we go bankrupt, then, we'll let Nora support us. Justin. The corners of his lips spasmed. Those who didn't know better would have thought that Iris was saying that she would support them after he went bankrupt. He couldn't reveal his identity, but when he saw that the two women seemed so full of fighting spirit, he got out of his internal struggle. He smiled and said, don't worry, even though I would very much like to sponge off a woman, I'll refrain from trying that. He spoke solemnly. With me around, the hunts will not go bankrupt. Her son's firm and confident words made Iris' flustered heart calm down. To be honest, before she told the truth, she'd still been taking a chance. She felt that since twenty years had gone by, perhaps Philip had already forgotten her a long time ago, or perhaps he no longer minded. But now that things had reached this point, it was useless to dwell any further on. It. When she was young, for Justin's sake, she had suffered so many grievances and wasted twenty years of her youth in this villa. Now that her son had grown up, it was time for him to support and protect her. After Iris came to terms with it, she got out of her internal struggle. She suggested, how about having a meal before you leave? Nah, it's fine. Justin rejected her. Iris nodded and said, well, I'm sure you have a lot of arrangements to make. In that case, go ahead. 
Justin exchanged a look with Nora when he heard this. There were some things that Justin was too embarrassed to say, but Nora understood what he was thinking, so she said, well, he does have a lot to do, but the most important thing now is helping you to move out, Iris. Iris was a little surprised. She looked at Justin in disbelief, only to see him nodding at her. Iris bit her lip. S surely there's no need for that. I've already become accustomed to living here. Really. Nora was a little troubled. But both of us will be very busy in the future. I was thinking of asking you to take care of the three children at home. At the mention of the children, Iris hesitated. Nora sighed again. Pete has been with Justin since he was a baby and has mild autism. Cherry also likes her grandmother's company very much. As for Xander, the situation is even tougher. That boy was raised by Truman. Yale, so he lacks companionship from his family and is very insecure. Sigh. I wonder if Xander will end up straying onto the wrong path in the future. Convinced, Iris gritted her teeth at once and said, I'll come with the two of you. Iris was someone whose actions spoke louder than words. Now that they had agreed on it, she would no longer be afraid. She immediately called Mrs. Landis over to pack her things for her. Justin held her shoulders, walked to the side, and said softly, Mom, after you come back, you have to take over the home. Iris wanted to refuse, but Justin said with a cold look in his eyes, Grandma has issues with Nora. Now that Herman is back, she'll definitely waver again. She has become muddle-headed, I can't let her control the house anymore. Otherwise, when Nora marries me in the future, the family will definitely be a huge mess. Justin sighed. You don't understand Nora. The only thing she likes to do is sleep, and she hates troublesome things the most. If she finds out she'll have to face so much trouble by marrying me, there's a high chance she won't marry me anymore. Iris. Her son was being too exaggerated. Nora hadn't even uttered a single word of rebuttal despite the super huge trouble she had just caused. From that alone, one could see that Nora would never refuse to marry him just because of something as trivial as that. However, her son was right in saying that she ought to take over the house. This way, when Nora marries into the family, there would be a lot less trouble handing over the family affairs. Now that she could do something for them, Iris felt that her return was no longer entirely meaningless. There were almost a hundred pots of orchids in the greenhouse. But with just a phone call from Justin, more than twenty bodyguards walked in one by one and started to move the flowers out. Seeing them going in and out, Nora slipped over to Justin and remarked, Pete said that you always bring more than twenty bodyguards with you when you go out. So, it really is true. Justin nodded. Yeah, sometimes I bring more. Ever since he was abducted at the age of five and subsequently rescued, Justin always traveled with this many people. Nora glanced at him silently with a pitying look in her eyes. Justin thought that she was feeling sorry for him because he had been kidnapped at a young age, but in the end, Nora unexpectedly said something that totally ruined the atmosphere, just how scared of dying are you? Justin. The night was so pleasant and the environment also so nice. There was a romantic mood in the air even till the woman had kept quiet, so how come it was ruined the moment she spoke? The corners of his lips spasmed. The group eventually separated. Nora was going to the laboratory to continue her research into Xander's affairs. For her, no matter how important something was, and no matter how big the hunt's fortune was, Xander's affairs must still be handled first. Because it would be time for him to be injected with the V-15 in another three days. Nora had been struggling over whether or not to inject it into him. Would he really die if he was not injected with it? Was the gene serum really lethal, or was it more like a drug addiction where one must continuously consume it? She had to study it and find out properly before the deadline. Besides, since Philip had said that he was going to take action against the hunts, then it definitely was not going to be something he could accomplish with a few words. He also needed to make preparations. It would take a few days for things to ferment. Therefore, her main task during these three days would still be to study the V-15. In the hospital, when Nora arrived at the laboratory, Lily was analyzing the components of V-15. Seeing Nora enter, Lily immediately said, Boss, the serum's components are indeed not analyzable. 
It is too complex, I am afraid it will take a few years for us to study it thoroughly. Nora was not surprised. If the gene serum's formula was that easy to analyze, then Truman and the others would not have pursued her mother so persistently. Twenty-five years had already passed, yet Truman and the others were still putting their hopes of finding clues on her. In that case, this must surely be a Herculean task. To be honest, Nora had already expected the results, but she still couldn't bring herself to terms with it. She nodded. I'll take over. Lily stepped aside and Nora sat down. She held various instruments in her hands and separated the components of the serum, hoping to find clues from it. Three days later, Nora's eyes were bloodshot and she had dark circles under her eyes. After three consecutive days of work without any sleep, she had finally derived the V15 formula, but at the same time, her heart also sank. It was really a gene-repairing drug and not some kind of narcotic drug. In other words, Xander must be injected with the drug, otherwise, he would really die. She took a deep breath. A while later, she took out her cell phone and called Caleb, who was abroad. As soon as the call connected, Caleb said, Nora, I have been waiting for your call. Nora kept quiet for a while before she asked, is it necessary to inject him with the V15? Yes, it is. Caleb said, if you don't, the reparation of the previously repaired genes won't be adequate, and his brain will explode which would surely kill him. I have already looked into Itzander's modifications are in his brain genes. If the V15 is not injected at the stipulated time, he will die. Nora sighed. The V15's formula does not seem very complex. Yes, none of the formulas from V1 to V15 are complex. The most complex one is the V16. In addition, there are a few types of gene serums. Some improve IQ while some improve physical strength. The formulas for V1 to V15 are all different for each type of serum. The only thing they have in common is that they all need the very last V16. Upon hearing this, Nora's pupils shrank. Caleb sighed. I'm dying, so I don't need the V16 anymore. However, every genetically modified person would need the V16 at the end. Therefore, you should know the importance of the V16 now, right? Nora nodded to express that she had understood. No wonder her mother had said that she must not expose her abilities, lest she ended up being targeted. It was possible that some of the most outstanding people in the world might just be genetically modified humans. Additionally, there were so many people that needed the V16 as an antidote. She suddenly felt even greater pressure. Such a group of people looking for her, could she really obtain the V16 for Xander? Also, if what her mother had left behind was really the formula, if she really produced the V16, thereby removing the last restriction on successful genetic modifications, what would the world turn into? Would someone deliberately train a group of genetically modified warriors and unify the world? Or would human beings with genetically modified IQ genes develop at a high speed and deplete the Earth's resources in a dozen years or perhaps even just a few years? She dared not imagine such consequences. But with how things currently were, she didn't have the leisure to care about such things anymore either. Nora said, I see. Caleb was silent for a while. Suddenly, he said, I didn't expect Xander to also be your son. Don't worry, I will contact you in time if I find clues regarding the V16. Nora had been trying hard to find clues from the things that her mother had left behind, but she still couldn't find any. It would be for the best if Caleb could inform her if he found any clues. Nora replied, thanks a lot. Caleb kept quiet for a while before he finally said, you're welcome. After hanging up the phone, Nora called Justin. The phone only rang once before Justin answered. He asked, how is it? Nora was silent for a moment. Finally, she said, let's inject him with it. When Justin heard this, he knew at once that the serum was safe and could be injected as is. But at the same time, the injection would only extend Xander's lifespan by three months. If they still couldn't find the V16 within three months, Xander would still die. He said, okay. Before hanging up, Nora asked, how is Xander? He was fine the last few days, but he started having a headache when he woke up today. I've gotten the family doctor to inject him with an anesthetic, so he is now asleep. 
Justin explained Xander's condition, I will inject the gene serum into him now. Okay, I'm on my way. Observe all of Xander's reactions after the injection. Okay. Nora left and drove straight to the hunts. The car stopped right in front of the villa. When she went upstairs, she saw that Justin had not injected the serum into Xander yet. When he saw her, he explained, our medical equipment is constantly observing Xander's condition, so it won't cause any delays. I wanted you to see it with your own eyes. Nora nodded. There would probably be physical reactions after the injection. These were all important clues and experimental data, which might play a certain role in Nora's subsequent research and development of the V-16. This was despite Nora realizing after studying the V-15 that she probably would not be able to develop the V-16 in just three months with her own abilities. Her only option now was to look for clues that her mother had left her. Xander was lying quietly on the bed. She personally injected Xander with the V-15. Little by little, the liquid was injected into his body. Xander, who had been under anesthesia, suddenly opened his eyes after the serum was injected. His eyes were clean and clear as though he hadn't been affected at all. He sat up in a daze. He looked at Nora and then at Justin. Then, he rubbed his head. Justin asked nervously, do you feel uncomfortable anywhere? Xander shook his head, his big eyes filled with puzzlement. He replied, I don't feel any discomfort. It's just that a mathematical Olympiad problem that I was discussing with Pete yesterday has suddenly become very simple. This was the consequence of taking the IQ Improvement Gene Serum. It seemed that Xander's IQ would be the highest in the family in the future. Nora observed all the numerical data of Xander's body. In the end, she concluded that everything about Xander's body was normal. It was so normal that Nora even wondered if she had been fooled by Truman. Had she made the right decision in injecting Xander with the V-15 or not? Then, someone pushed the door open. Pete and Cherry followed behind Iris obediently, and the three came over together. When they saw Xander sitting there, all three of them released a huge pent-up breath. The two little fellows and Iris' movements were exactly the same, which gave people a joyful feeling. Nora and Justin looked at each other and smiled. However, Nora's mood became increasingly heavy. The more one understood the gene serum, the more they would realize just how amazing it was. It was too unhuman-like. She sighed silently. At this moment, they suddenly heard a noise from downstairs. Justin went downstairs and saw Herman standing there. When Herman saw him, he immediately yelled, Justin, have you become muddle-headed? How can you let Iris move back here? Do you have any idea how big a disaster she will bring to the hunts by moving back here? Herman was furious. He pointed to Iris and said, and you, too. Never mind that you have offended an influential person, but you still have the cheek to come back here now. Will you really only stop after you've implicated all the hunts? Leave the hunt manor at once. Otherwise, the hunts will really be in huge trouble. Iris frowned. With regard to that, she had no right to speak. Justin stepped forward and asked, where's the butler? Who let him in? The butler was wiping his sweat in silence beside him. No matter what, Herman was still Justin's father. The bodyguards did not dare to take any real action against him when he forcibly broke in. The butler didn't speak. It was instead Herman who shouted angrily, do you know that Philip Coleman has already started to take action against the hunts? I heard that he has been doing a large-scale acquisition of the Hunt Corporation's shares, our share prices are rising madly right now. A lot of the shareholders have all decided to sell their shares. He has made up his mind to take over the Hunt Corporation. Justin calmly replied, yeah, I know. You do. Are you sure you do? With the shares becoming more and more expensive, we will have less and less cash flow to buy back the shares. At the same time, we will also have fewer and fewer shares in our hands. I know you have also been dispatching people to secretly buy them, but how can the hunts, cash flow compare to theirs? They have accumulated generations, worth of riches. No one knows how many trillions of dollars they have. Can you beat them? As far as I know, the hunts only have a few hundred billion dollars worth of cash flow. Herman pointed at him. Then, he lowered his voice and said, I have also heard another piece of important news, I heard that Philip is a member of the Imperial League. Do you know what the Imperial League is? 
The dozen or so people in there are in control of global economic trends. The hunts can't beat them at all. What you are doing is no different from risking the entire hunt corporation. Everyone already knows about this and they are all waiting to laugh at the hunts. Your uncle's family are also waiting for you to step down. After saying all that, Herman went on anxiously and angrily. You are my son, so I will definitely have to take your side. Justin, your only option now is to drive Iris out or send her to Philip. Otherwise, you won't be able to appease his anger. Our family really can't afford to mess with them. The Imperial League. They are part of the Imperial League, you know. Justin frowned when he heard him say the things he shouldn't be saying, and the look in his eyes turned cold. Chapter 723 The Shocking Turn of Events Herman, who didn't know that he had already hit Justin's sore spot, was still talking about how powerful Philip was. As he spoke, Iris gradually lowered her head. She knew that she had destroyed the family's peace and tranquility. Just as she was suffering through her psychological ordeal, and while Herman stood on the moral high ground and criticized her. Justin suddenly said, So, that's why you were willing to give your wife to someone else and even cooperate with him to act as if your son had been kidnapped. His simple few words made all the sounds in the room cease abruptly. Iris' head also whipped up and she looked at them in disbelief. Herman's mouth was still open. He was staring at him in shock because he had been exposed, and it seemed like he'd never expected Justin to say such a thing. Iris went from being confused to being shocked. Her brows slowly drew together and she looked at Herman in disbelief. She swallowed and asked, Justin, what do you mean? Herman immediately shouted, Justin, don't you dare make false accusations. Justin lowered his eyes. I didn't want to thoroughly embarrass you, but since you insist on getting into the line of fire, then let's just speak frankly here. He looked at Herman and said, when Philip Coleman visited the house as a guest and talked about his ex-girlfriend, you already knew that the ex-girlfriend he was talking about was mom, right? Herman didn't admit it, but he suddenly didn't dare to look at Iris. What nonsense are you talking about? Justin sneered, in the following few years, the hunts showed faint signs of being suppressed. During those few years, the Smiths also gradually gained the upper hand, and it looked like they would soon surpass us and become the number one family in New York, didn't it? Herman immediately said, that's because Ian Smith is very impressive, whereas I don't have any talent for business. Is that so? Justin cast his eyes down. The hunts do not have the custom of only letting the eldest son or people from the direct lineage inherit the title of the head of the family. Although you were a bit of a jerk back then, Grandpa had chosen you. He must have a reason for doing so, right? Uncle Raymond, as well as my other uncles, were eyeing your position, yet they couldn't take it from you. Why was that? Is it also because you don't have any talent for business? Herman choked. Justin continued to speak with a contemptuous smile on his face. Outsiders all say that the elderly Mr. Smith had placed all his energy and focus into the company during those few times because of the heartbreak he'd suffered, but he had been in a total daze at that time, so how could he possibly have had such great ambitions? Feeling that there was nothing to live for anymore, Ian had sought death at one point. He hadn't even cared about his family property anymore and had given everything to his nephew. In fact, one could even say that before Norris' return, he hadn't even considered adopting Joel as his son. Instead, he was just giving it away. Even if Ian had turned his sorrow into motivation after Yvette's departure, it was still impossible for him to really want to expand and develop the Smith Corporation. He would only casually work for the Smith Corporation out of sheer boredom. But even when Ian was in a bad state of mind, the hunts had gone from bad to worse. In addition, during that time, his grandfather had still been around and had been the person in charge of the hunts. Herman hadn't taken over the family yet. Herman was not at all as incompetent as what outsiders made him out to be. Otherwise, how would it have been possible for him to take Lauren with him to another country, start from zero, and achieve what he had currently accomplished in just 20 years? That's right, Herman and Lauren already had a successful business abroad. The fact that Lauren had immediately organized such a large orchid exhibition when she'd only just returned to the country was enough proof of their current economic strength. 
Moreover, there was something that Justin had actually been unable to figure out all these years. Even if Herman had done something wrong and cheated on his wife, would anyone really be like the old Mr. and Mrs. Hunt, and drive their son out of the house but keep their grandson? All of these were choices that the Hunts had been forced to make back then. When the elderly Mr. Hunt and Herman felt like they had come to their wits end regarding the company, they immediately understood what had happened. Thus, Herman had promptly and decisively cheated on Iris, in order to make her give up hope on him. They'd originally thought that Philip would let them off once they sacrificed Iris, but they were wrong. At that time, the only thing Iris had cared about was her son. When she went traveling, she'd actually run into Philip. However, she had no plans to rekindle her relationship with him. This caused Philip to become even crueler, and he found someone to kidnap Justin. One could say that the Hunts had abstained from taking action at that time, despite their ability to do so. The Hunts were so powerful in New York, how would they possibly be unable to find the child when he was first discovered missing? It wasn't that they couldn't find him, rather, they hadn't searched for him at all. By the time Iris returned and found that he was been abducted, too much time had already passed. By then, even if she sought help from the Smiths, the kidnappers would have already fled New York. Even the Smiths wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Therefore, the Hunts had forced Iris to approach Philip. They wanted to use Iris as a sacrificial offering. Unfortunately, Iris still didn't have any thoughts of reconciling with Philip. Instead, she reached a different agreement with him, which was to watch her son grow up in the Hunts without interfering with his life. After the old Mr. Hunt heard about this, he realized and understood that since Philip loved Iris so deeply, he would never hurt her. Additionally, if he wanted Iris to protect the Hunts, then it would only be possible if Justin stayed in the family. Thus, Mr. Hunt had pretended to drive away Herman, and also declared that he would take it that he never had a son like him. His purpose in driving him away was so that Herman could go overseas, start a new business, and open up a new world for the Hunts. This was so that the Hunts could avoid a crushing defeat should something ever go wrong with Philip and he targets the Hunts in the future. Herman might look like he had left the family without taking a cent, but when he went abroad back then, his father most certainly would have secretly given him a sum of money as startup capital. All of their schemes were closely linked with one another. The elderly Mr. and Mrs. Hunt, who seemingly had a deep sense of love and righteousness, were just doing all that for the sake of the Hunts. Justin had only slowly pieced everything together after Iris told him the truth. This was also the reason why he hadn't immediately sought revenge on Lauren for kidnapping him because she wasn't the one who had instigated the kidnapping at all. It was Philip. Justin's words, like a sharp knife, cut open the hunts, veil of pretense, exposing all of their ugly and nasty true colors. Iris was shocked and astounded. She felt like the worldview she'd held all these years had come crashing down all around her. She thought that she had caused the Hunts huge trouble, but little did she think that the Hunts had been using her all this time. Herman refused to admit it. What are you talking about? I don't understand at all, you. You don't understand. Is that so? In that case, shall I lay out all the evidence one by one? Justin's voice was low and deep, but there was a mocking smile on the corners of his lips. Herman narrowed his eyes. After some time, he finally dropped his pretenses. He calmly said, since you've already figured out everything, then take your mother with you and leave the hunts at once. Because, I, the real head of the hunts, am back. Justin stared at him. Herman lowered his head and looked at the family members who had hurried over after hearing about his return and the argument. He straightened his back. On his visage that was three parts similar to Justin's, his eyes were dark and deep. He calmly said, my father left all the shares in the family to me back then. After saying this, he immediately took out a will. Upon seeing the share transfer agreement, everyone was shocked. When the elderly Mr. Hunt passed away, in his final words, he had only left instructions saying that Justin was to take charge of the company. Therefore, Justin had naturally inherited his shares. With the will, though, Justin would be kicked out of the picture. Everyone in the family fell silent. They all stared at the will and then at each other, all of them at a loss for words. 
Roger said, Uncle Herman, if a will exists, then Grandpa's shares should indeed be given to you. In that case, from today onwards, you will be the head of the hunts. Some defenders of Justin said, but is the will really valid? Who can prove it? Along with these words, someone supported a shaky Mrs. Hunt as she walked out. She said unhurriedly, I can prove it. Chapter 724 The Hunts Who Plot Against One Another Nora was standing upstairs and watching the intense discussion downstairs. She clearly saw that Justin had trembled lightly when Mrs. Hunt walked out. Nora sighed silently. Justin might never have ever thought that his grandmother, who had raised him into an adult, would also be part of the group of people plotting against him. How sad and lonely must that man surrounded by his so-called family members be right now. Justin was a man who had always been scheming and inscrutable, so he didn't say anything. Iris, however, stared at the group of people. The woman, who now knew the truth, was suffering quite the mental breakdown at the moment, not for herself, but for her son. Her entire body shook with anger, and she rushed up to Herman, stretched out her hand, and slapped him across the cheek. Smack! She had put all of her strength into the slap, causing Herman's head to turn to the side. Nora saw that Herman could have avoided the slap, but he didn't. Instead, he chose to take it. Iris screamed, Herman Hunt, you are so despicable. Never mind that you plotted against me, but how can you plot against even your own son? Herman's head was turned to the side. The handprint on his cheek quickly swelled up visibly, which went to show just how furious Iris was. He looked at Iris calmly. Iris, I don't mind if you blame me for this. It's all because I am too incapable. Twenty years ago, I didn't have the ability to keep you by my side. Twenty years later, I still don't have the ability to keep you with me. When we got married, we had clearly vowed that we would never abandon each other for the rest of our lives, but unfortunately, you have offended someone you should not have. When Herman said that, there was sorrow in his eyes as he gazed at Iris. To be honest, hadn't he also loved Iris when he was young? In fact, one could even say that he still did. At that time, he and Ian had both courted Yvette. Later, after Yvette chose Ian, he had also been envious of the beautiful love between the two of them. Afterward, he had met Iris. When he saw how gentle Iris had been to the poor lad Philip, his heart had skipped a beat. Thus, he had gotten the hunts to approach the Evanses and propose marriage. Everyone said that he had married Iris because he could not manage to take Yvette as his wife. The only person in New York who was comparable to Yvette at that time had been Iris. But nobody knew that he had only courted Yvette back then just to fight with Ian. Towards Iris, however, he had truly fallen in love with her. He hadn't expected Iris to agree to the proposal, either. Before they got married, Iris had told him honestly that their marriage was a political one, that she had no feelings for him. However, Herman had still insisted on getting married. At that time, he was already in love with her. He'd even vowed that he would treat her well for the rest of his life. He just never expected Philip the Pauper to suddenly transform into the head of one of the mysterious families of the world. Back then, when the hunts were suppressed by him, just how tormented had he been? His father had spent his entire life turning the hunts into a big and powerful family, but before the company and family were even handed over to him, he had already implicated them. Herman had indeed deliberately betrayed Iris, but at that time, he had also suffered great emotional torment. Iris didn't understand the complicated look in Herman's eyes. She merely felt that the man in front of her was simply too shameless. She stared at him. If that was the case, then you should have made things clear to me from the start. Even if I have to leave with Justin, I would never drag the hunts in this. How could Herman possibly bear to let them leave, though? He clenched his jaw and narrowed his eyes. You want to take Justin away. Justin is my, Herman Hunt's, son. He is a descendant of the Hunt's. Are you planning to take him with you as you turn to Philip? I won't allow it. Iris really couldn't understand him. He was the one taking full advantage of her and her son, yet he was also the one saying that Justin was his son, so they mustn't leave. She felt that Herman must be schizophrenic. She smiled in resignation and asked, Herman, what do you mean by that? Herman cast his eyes down and sighed. What I mean by that? 
couldn't you have just behaved yourself, accepted your fate, and stayed in that suburban villa for the rest of your life? This way, I would never have returned to the family, and would never have fought with our son for the position of the head of the family. But look at you, you had already stayed there for the first twenty years, why did you let everything go to waste in the end? Iris stared at him, finally understanding what he meant. It was because of Herman's selfish intentions that they hadn't let her go back then. Since he had given up Iris, then he totally could have just let go and push her into Philip's arms. Given Philip's means, he would have been able to trick Iris into staying with him eventually. But Herman hadn't. Instead, he had used Justin to keep her captive, preferring to imprison her for twenty years in a suburban villa as though she was a canary in captivity, over giving her true freedom. She clenched her fists tightly. Herman, you are such a despicable lowlife. Herman lowered his eyes and took a step forward. I don't care whether you call me despicable or shameless, but Iris, you and your son only have two choices now. Iris stared at him. Go on. Justin also looked at Herman. Herman sighed and said, Justin, you are my son, why would I do anything to harm you? If your mother goes to Philip and asks him to stop, then I will take it that this will doesn't exist. My business overseas is enough for me to support myself. Iris took a step back. Even now, Herman still wanted to sacrifice her. While she was contemplating in a daze, she heard Justin's firm and sonorous voice. That's impossible. Tell me the second option. You. Herman was practically speechless towards Justin. He pointed at him, his finger in the air for a while. The elderly Mrs. Hunt took a step forward and held Justin's arm. Justin, my good grandson, just agree to it. Iris had already moved to the suburbs when you were five, and she has never taken care of you ever since. Besides, who knows if her heart had already been with Philip long ago. They are each other's first love, so can't you just take it that you're giving your mother your blessings? Once she is gone, the will would be considered non-existent. All these years, it was only under your leadership that the hunts could come this far, everyone can see that. If your father ever dares to fight with you for the position of the head of the family after your mother leaves, I will be the first to raise my voice. Justin looked at Mrs. Hunt as she spoke. It was not that she did not love him. It was just that before loving him, the Hunt's interests mattered more than anything else. Justin then looked at Herman. All these years, he had hardly ever called him, nor had he ever paid any attention to him. He had just been taking advantage of him all along. From beginning to end, Iris had been the only one who did things for his sake. Justin looked at Herman coldly. Tell me the second option. Seeing him like this, Herman said angrily, you are really so unrepentant. If you don't agree to it, then even if it's for the sake of the hunts, I'll have to come home and inherit the shares that your grandfather has left me. Justin, by then, I won't be able to guarantee that I'll be able to protect you and your mother. Also, the consequences of you going head to head with Philip will only be you overestimating your abilities. However, it was as if Justin hadn't heard him. He merely let out a contemptuous scoff. Herman sighed. Justin, I did care about you all these years after all, you are my son. As long as you are willing to take a step back and send your mother to Philip, and if your mother thinks of a way, Philip won't drive the hunts into a corner anymore. Don't worry, Dad definitely won't fight with you. I haven't been by your side all these years, sigh. There was finally a bit of real emotion in those words of his. Herman was not a good person, but he was not a total villain who completely disregarded kinship either. Justin, however, looked at him and said, I'm glad you weren't with me when I grew up. Herman was taken aback. Justin said sarcastically, after all, they all say that like father, like son. If you had been by my side, I might have also become a despicable lowlife scum like you who betrayed women in for survival. His sarcasm made Herman's face flush. He pointed at Justin angrily. You, what right do you have to insult me like that? Exclamation mark. Justin, since you refuse to listen, then don't blame your father for fighting with you. You must give me all the assets that your grandfather has left me. You also have to give me the position of the head of the family. Herman narrowed his eyes. You are still too young and headstrong, so you are competitive over everything. 
In that case, I will take over as head of the family for a few years for you. You can inherit it again after I die. It's only right for a son to inherit his father's legacy. Don't worry, I won't leave you with nothing. As soon as he said that, Justin said coldly, Oh. I can give you all of Grandpa's assets, but do you think that you can become the head of the family just because you have those shares? Herman was taken aback. What do you mean? Chapter 725 King of the World Herman held the will in his hand. This is a will left behind by your grandfather. This will is completely valid since he did not leave any other will when he passed away. Are you still planning to deny it? Justin sneered. Of course I won't deny it. I'll give you what you want. Lawrence. Yes. Lawrence, who had appeared at the door, walked in with a share transfer agreement in his hand. He handed it to Herman. Mr. Hunt, this is the share transfer agreement boss prepared for you. Please sign it. This turn of events exceeded everyone's expectations. Everyone looked at Justin in confusion. Lawrence explained, since boss knows that you schemed against him back then, how could he not understand the reason why old sir had not left a will behind here? Boss won't take a single cent from him. He'll return it all to you. It can be considered as him repaying the hunts for raising him. When Herman heard this, he felt a little ashamed. He stared at Justin and advised again, Justin, why are you doing this? You've worked hard for the hunts for so many years. It no longer matters to our family how much money we have. Are you really going to watch the hunts walk toward destruction? Mrs. Hunt could not bear for Justin to leave. They did not come to force Justin to leave today. They only had one goal, to get Iris to calm Philip's anger. Herman had feelings for Iris. No matter how reluctant he was, he still had to give her up. Mrs. Hunt said, Justin. Her old eyes were filled with tears. How could she not have feelings for a grandson she had raised with her own hands? Furthermore, no matter how outstanding her son was, her grandson was better. Justin was more business-minded than Herman. Making him the person in charge was the best thing for the hunts. Roger was shocked. Justin, have you really thought it through? He had fought for the position of power his entire life, and he was going to hand it over just like that. As the group of people was letting their thoughts run wild, Justin said, sign it. Herman could only lower his head and open the share transfer document in his hand. However, when he saw the contents, he was instantly stunned. Justin, what do you mean by this? He slammed the document on the ground. Are you kidding me? What's wrong? Mrs. Hunt was dumbfounded. Herman pointed at the document and said, the transfer of shares here is only 5%. Father left me 54% back then. Only with more than 50% of the shares could one have the right to speak. Everyone understood this logic. Therefore, the shares Justin had received from Old Master were 54%. But now, he was only giving back 5%. Justin glanced at Lawrence. When he did not speak, Lawrence began to explain endlessly, Mr. Hunt, listen to me. We have calculated these shares very meticulously. Herman stared at him. Lawrence said, Boss took over Hunt Corporation ten years ago. Over the years, after the hunts went public, they issued a portion of the shares to the public. The shareholders' shares have been diluted quite a lot. Everyone in the family should know this. If the hunts wanted to become powerful, they had to issue shares to finance it. Naturally, the shares in the hands of the family members would shrink. In fact, although they called it issuing shares, and while a portion of the shares had indeed been bought by the stockholders, most of the shares had been bought by Justin himself. That was why Justin's shares had not been diluted all these years and had remained at 51%. Lawrence continued, the 54% from 10 years ago is less than 5% now. Boss thought that since you gave him life, he would give you a little extra. Herman. Herman was furious. A hundred million from ten years ago is not the same value as a hundred million today. Okay, Lawrence said, boss has already exchanged it for your current value and even considered the dollar depreciation. Otherwise, you don't even have one percent of the shares. Herman, he did not expect this outcome. He looked at Justin and said angrily, are you trying to take the hunts for yourself? Justin said calmly, I'm just taking back what belongs to me. He had led the hunts to where they were today. 
In ten years, the hunt's assets had increased by a few hundred times. Although the shares of the family members had shrunk, whose money had not increased by more than a hundred times. When he, Justin, thought of Herman and Grandpa Hunt's intentions, he instantly realized something and asked Lawrence to calculate all the money he had earned over the years. Since he had chosen to make this public today, how could he not be prepared? He did not care about the Hunt's money, but the company he casually ran could not be taken away just like that. Herman took a deep breath. He did not expect Justin to have such meticulous records. He could not find any mistakes in his work. He had originally thought that Justin was not prepared, but now he could only get back 5% of the shares. However, 5% was also a significant share. Seeing his hesitation, Lawrence said, Mr. Hunt, are you going to sign this or not? If you don't sign it, then you're giving it to my boss. That's good too. Otherwise, my boss would only have 40% of the shares left. Sigh. When Herman heard this, he signed it without hesitation. After signing it, he looked up again. Justin, don't think you'll win just because of this. You only have 46% of the shares now. You can't say anything. With that, he raised the 5% shares in his hand and said, as a 5% shareholder of the company, I'll cooperate with others and request to choose the chairman again. Roger, how many shares do you have? When Roger from the side family heard this, he said, 7%. How much is it? I'll buy it. Herman had also earned a lot of money from his overseas businesses over the past few years. He could be said to be wealthy now. He said directly, also, for the Hunt's shares, anyone who wants to sell them at a high price can come and look for me. Roger looked at Justin and then at Herman. He immediately chose the team without hesitation. Herman, what are you saying? Damn, we have 7% of the shares. You don't have to buy it, either. I'll give you the right to speak without it. Wasn't it good to watch the father and son fight amongst themselves? Okay, let's go have a chat. Who else has more shares? My old friends from back then should still be in the company. Herman and the people from the side family left Justin's villa. Mrs. Hunt stood there, her figure trembling. She looked at Justin and shouted, Justin, I have 10% of the shares. Don't, don't blame me, if you make a decision, you can come and look for me. If I give you that 10%, you'll still be the head of the Hunts. With that, she left. After everyone left, Nora said goodbye to Justin and prepared to go home to sleep. After all, she had not rested well for a few days. As for Justin's matters, she would talk about them when she woke up. Iris also went upstairs to accompany the three children. After everyone left, Lawrence came in front of Justin. Boss, you could have just given him 1% of the shares, why did you give him 5%? Now, you have less than 50%. You don't have absolute control anymore. Justin glanced at him and said calmly, if we don't give him some hope, will those demons show their faces? Lawrence. Lawrence coughed. It turned out that boss was planning to clean up the hunts. He said, then let's. Justin no longer had the lonely feeling of being betrayed. He was like the king of the world again, as if everything was under his control. He said slowly, doesn't Sean have 4% of the shares? Let him spread the news that he plans to sell them and see how many people are interested in these shares. Yes, sir. Sean's shares were his shares. Therefore, Justin had always been holding on to 50%. Lawrence asked, then about Philip. As soon as he said this, Justin's phone rang. He opened it and realized that it was Imperial League's chat page. Someone asked, who has shares of the Hunt Corporation? I'm willing to buy them at a high price. Justin sneered when he saw this. Chapter 726 with King, there's no need to be afraid. The person who had asked this in the group was Bear. There were 12 people in the Imperial League. Other than King, all of them were represented by animal names. No one in the group knew each other, including King. No one was allowed to probe the other's privacy, so even King did not know who the other 11 were. But now, Justin was certain. Bear was Philip. He sat on the sofa with his long legs crossed. His well-defined fingers tapped the arm of the sofa beside him. His long eyes were narrowed slightly as a dark light flashed across them. 
When he saw his expression, Lawrence could not help but light a candle for Philip's funeral in his heart. This meant that Boss was going to set up traps again. He wondered how badly Philip would be tricked. As he was thinking, Justin suddenly smirked and sent a message in the group, I do. As king, it was normal for him to own the shares of the largest company in each country. No one in the group was suspicious. Bear's attitude immediately became respectful. I'll talk to you in private, sir. Justin sat there leisurely, his expression unchanged. At this moment, Lawrence asked, Boss, why are you still selling your shares to him? Aren't you afraid that you'll lose control of the hunts if you sell them to him? Lawrence knew his boss. Justin had 51% of the shares under his name and was quite domineering in controlling the direction of the company. However, there was still 4% under Sean's name. In addition, Justin's Imperial League persona also controlled 5% of the hunts, shares. Boss had the shares firmly in his hands. After giving Herman 5%, it seemed like there were only 46% left. However, in reality, he still had the final say in the hunts. When Justin heard this, he glanced at Lawrence and smiled. If he offers a high price for this 5% of shares, I could consider selling them. The hunts was only a cover for Justin to hide his identity. Compared to the financial group he really controlled, the hunts, assets were simply a drop in the ocean. Lawrence. He understood. Boss was asking for a sky-high price. As he was thinking, sure enough, Bear sent a private message, could you name a price? I want those shares. Justin was about to extort him when another message suddenly appeared in the group. Cat, can you sell them to me? I'm willing to pay a high price. Justin. Lawrence, who was watching secretly, was stunned. Who is this? Isn't Philip the one called Bear? Or is he Cat? Justin was also confused, but he quickly said, no. He was the one who had personally invited Cat to the Imperial League. It was considered new blood in Imperial League because he did not want Imperial League to forever be controlled by those old fogies. Times were changing. Five years ago, he had realized that Kat had emptied a certain stock without anyone noticing. Then, she had earned $75 million. The stocks had stabilized. This person was very talented in business, but she was also very restrained. She had only earned $75 million before she became invisible. After that, she was no longer greedy. Justin had admired her very much at that time, so he personally invited her to the Imperial League. In Imperial League, Kat rarely spoke. Justin had been observing all these years to see if there were any big dealings. After all, the information in Imperial League allowed one to win without even trying. However, he realized that there were none at all. This made Justin admire Kat even more. He felt that this person could resist the temptation of money. How could he have expected that Nora did try to earn more money only because she wanted to sleep and was not free at all? Furthermore, she had always felt that $75 million were enough. Justin knew that Philip was not Cat, but he did not understand why she would suddenly come out and make trouble. As he was thinking, someone else jumped out. Eagle, I want to ask about the price too. We can give it to the highest bidder. Lawrence was confused and could not help but look at Justin. He was silent for a long time before saying, Boss, how many people have you offended? Justin. He also wanted to know what was wrong with Eagle. Bear, no matter how much they are willing to pay, I can increase the price by 20%. Justin stared at the Imperial League group. For the first time, he felt that things were a little out of control. At the Smiths. Joel stared at his phone for a moment before looking at Ian and reporting, there's indeed someone in the group buying the shares. Dad, you're so perceptive. But is Philip really that difficult to deal with? Raising the price by 20% is simply too much. Ian lowered his eyes and said, Philip is definitely in the Imperial League. More than 30 years ago, I tried my best to join this group. When I entered the group, Bear was already there. The group is filled with torch flames passed down from generation to generation. When I entered the group, there were only eight people. Over the years, more people joined until there were twelve in total. Everyone in the group is a tycoon. Don't underestimate them. Joel nodded to show that he had learned something. Ian had passed on Eagle's account to him. 
Everyone said that he was not Ian's child. The outside world was saying that Ian did not treat Joel as someone in power. He had only given a portion of his shares, and his shares were only handed to him to manage. However, Joel knew in his heart that Ian had really treated him as his heir. It was because the person in charge of the Smiths did not want to inherit those shares, but this account. Over the years, he had been in charge of the Smiths and finally understood how important this account was. Joel nodded respectfully. Ian asked again, how much liquid capital is on my account? Joel sighed. It's only in tens of millions, but I still have it on my tab. Besides, I can continue to cash out a portion of it. I'll sell some shares if need be. Let's think of a way and help Justin get past this hurdle. After saying that, he was silent for a moment and asked, Dad, is it possible that Justin is also in the group? Ian waved his hand. There's an unwritten rule in the group. Only one person from each country can enter. There are two people from New York, but Kat is of English descent and can be considered British. Joel sighed. In the future, if there are any important clues or intelligence, you have to tell Justin. Otherwise, he won't be Philip's match. Yeah, Ian took a deep breath. Take care of him more in the future so that Nora can have a higher status at home. Joel agreed. Elsewhere, in the bedroom, Nora lay on the bed and stared at the message in the group. She had originally wanted to compete with him. Although she only had $75 million, what if she could buy 0.01% of the shares? In the end, she was too tired. She fainted in the blink of an eye and did not open her eyes again. When she woke up again, three days had passed. She stretched lazily. When she went downstairs, she happened to see Simon and Melissa downstairs talking to Ian. There was even Justin sitting beside her. Simon, I have some cash here too. Although it's not much, it's still a token of my sincerity. However, when we buy the hunts, shares, we have to write Nora's name. Justin, don't think too much about it. After all, you're not married yet. Of course, I don't mean for you to be controlled by Nora. Justin said humbly, Uncle, it's not necessary for the time being. However, Melissa called out his name. Although it's said that husband and wife should have the same heart without thoughts of profiting, and we're not trying to sow discord, a woman indeed can't rely on a man. With these shares, even if you have a change of heart in the future, you would have to consider it carefully. Justin, change of heart, how was that possible? What he was worried about now was that Nora would have a change of heart. He waved his hand and said, Melissa, I can't have a change of heart. He was high and mighty and would make anyone lower his head no matter who saw him. Only Ian and Joel could sit on equal footing with him, but right now, he was just a junior. Justin sighed silently. He was just here to see if Nora was awake. Why did he coincidentally bump into Simon and Melissa? As he was thinking, Ian smiled confidently. Even without the hunts, shares, Nora won't be bullied in the hunts. Don't worry, the Smiths have confidence. This behavior stunned them. Simon thought about it and suddenly realized something. He originally did not plan to mention it, but he looked at Justin and whispered, could it be that the Smiths really knows that big shot like in the legends? Melissa was stunned. What big shot? Simon smiled. We're all jokingly talking about a legend. It's said that the richest man in the world keeps a very low profile. Outside, everyone calls him king. Melissa was stunned. Is there really such a person? Simon shook his head. I don't know about that. I'll have to ask Ian. However, Ian revealed a deep smile and did not speak. Simon immediately understood and looked at Justin. You're really lucky, kid. If that's the case, even if you're really chased out by the hunts, you can rely on the business opportunity your father-in-law got from King to start over. Don't be afraid. Justin. Nora, who was upstairs. Chapter 727 Who is King? Nora had never felt very anxious about earning money. She was Cat, she was in the Imperial League group. A casual investment based on some information would earn her a lot. Why should she be persistent? But now, she realized that someone from the Smiths was also in the Imperial League chat. Who was it? The corners of her mouth immediately twitched. Could Eagle actually be Joel? From their previous conversation, she had once determined that Eagle was an American, 
and among them, the first person who could enter Imperial League was Justin. Last time, she wanted to ask Justin if he knew King, but when she probed him, he said was not Eagle. It turned out that Justin was not in the group. However, King was the creator of that group. It was said that before technology became so advanced, they already had special contacts. Imperial League had been established for hundreds of years. Nora went downstairs. When the people downstairs heard the commotion, they all looked up. When they saw Nora, Justin suddenly stood up and said, You're awake. Yes. Nora had just replied when Justin looked at the kitchen and said, Wait a minute. I'll see if they've cooked anything. After sleeping for three days without eating, she should definitely eat something soft to digest when she woke up. Justin entered the smith's kitchen and acted like he was familiar with it. Simon and Melissa looked at each other. Melissa nodded in satisfaction. When Ian saw this scene, his eyes were also filled with satisfaction. Simon even whispered, when he heard that Ian knew King, Justin's attitude became even more respectful. Ian had a proud look on his face as he looked at Nora. Did you see that? This is the power of our family. This kid probably won't dare to bully you again. Tear. Nora. For some reason, she felt that the reason Justin was suddenly so enthusiastic was that he felt a little guilty. But what was he feeling guilty about? At the thought of this, Ian sighed. We can only buy them from Hunt Corporation's insiders in the country. King didn't sell his shares to me. He sold them to Philip. Nora suddenly recalled that she was trying to buy the shares in the group three days ago. When she woke up, her bidding had turned cold. She immediately sat on the sofa and casually took out her phone. She opened it and looked at the Imperial League chat group. She realized that for the first time, there were 50-plus messages. These 50-plus messages were sent by Bear and Eagle. The two of them continued to raise the price, wanting to buy 5% of Hunt Corporation's shares from King. From the normal $1.5 billion at the beginning, they had increased the bid to $15 billion. Nora. The hunts were worth tens of billions, but this was only 5% of the shares. In the end, they sold it to Bear for $45 billion. This was simply 10 times the market price. The corners of Nora's mouth twitched. She felt that this group of people was crazy. She also felt that she was lucky to have fallen asleep. Otherwise, she would have felt even poorer. Why was she only worth $75 million? As she was sighing, Ian said, the price of tens of billions is ridiculous. However, I had a grudge against Philip back then. Unfortunately, King sold it to Philip. Simon said directly, why did King sell it to him but not to you? Ian sighed silently. Actually, King knows very well how much money every company has. There are only a few such people in New York. How can they compare to Philip? King must think that we're too poor. Sigh. Justin, who was walking out with the porridge, instantly fell silent when he heard this. He really did not. Although he looked down on the hunts, assets, he did not dare to look down on his father-in-law. He instantly felt even more guilty. He was afraid that his father-in-law would have something against him if he knew that he was king. He hurriedly carried the porridge to Nora and handed it to her. Nora took it. After taking two sips, she suddenly asked, Dad, who is that king? Although she had only joined Imperial League five years ago, she had actually been very curious about King for a long time. The people in the group were especially in awe of him. Furthermore, old Maddie had said last time that only with King's support and trust would she have the power to fight the mysterious organization. But now, she did not even know who King was and what was going on with Imperial League. Hearing her question, Ian said, King's identity is very mysterious. It's said that this identity can be traced back to hundreds of years ago. I've only heard about the news here. His consortium is low-key and huge. Some even say that one-tenth of the global wealth belongs to his consortium. However, their financial group is anonymous. No one knows which companies they have their hands in. For example, everyone should know about the hunts, shares, but no one knew that 5% belonged to King. As for King himself, no one has seen his true face. I heard that he lives in a castle. There are thousands of beautiful women in the palace, and he has thousands of sons to choose his next heir from. 
Justin, why didn't he know that he had thousands of sons? The corners of his mouth twitched. He was about to explain when Ian smiled. Of course, this is all nonsense. It's all speculation about King. After all, he has so much money. I think his life has already reached its peak. Ian thought about it for a moment before saying, according to my guess, although their consortiums earn money, they're also limited. Otherwise, they wouldn't have to be so low-key. Besides, King's legacy is very strange. Their legacy every generation is very peaceful. You can't feel the change in King in the group at all. I once suspected that King had never changed. He's an old monster who has lived for a hundred years. After all, technology and medicine are so advanced now. It shouldn't be difficult to live a long life, right? Justin. Nora was even more curious by Ian's words. Don't you have a guess as to who King is? Aren't there only a few richest men in the world? Ian shook his head, indicating that he did not know. Even those people did not seem like King. The corners of Justin's mouth twitched as he listened to them guess who he was in front of him. But when he thought of the reason he became king, he lowered his eyes and sighed. After the few people were done discussing, Justin and Nora went upstairs and finally had time to themselves. Justin was about to tease her, but he was grabbed by Nora. She asked, do you know who King is? Chapter 728 Pleasing Father-in-Law Justin was slightly stunned when he heard this and subconsciously said, I don't know. Okay. Justin retorted, is something the matter? Not really. I just wanted to find out since dad sounded so mysterious. Nora did not doubt it. After all, when Ian and the others mentioned King downstairs, she realized that Eagle was Joel, not Justin. This meant that Justin might not be in the group at all. He was quite pitiful. So, she shouldn't mention this topic to agitate him. Thinking of this, Nora changed the topic. Are you really okay? If you need help, just tell me directly. No, it's fine. Justin thought that she was going to ask him for help. But even if she wanted to look for King for help, he could not reveal his identity. It would be very dangerous if this identity was revealed. Perhaps instead of helping Nora, he might end up hurting her. This was also why he had lived in New York for so many years as Justin Hunt alone. After all, no one would associate the person in control of the number one family in New York with King. The number one power in New York had always lived in public. No matter where he went, his exact whereabouts could be found. At the thought of this, Justin lowered his eyes and said, From the legends of Herd of King, I learned that if you want his help with something, he is a very easygoing person. You can get Joel to convey your thoughts. Nora glanced at him. She thought that she could deliver the message herself without needing to ask Joel, but she decided not to continue this conversation. She changed the topic again. How has Xander been these past few days? After analyzing Xander's gene serum without any sleep for three days and injecting him with the drug, Nora fell asleep for three days after realizing that all his vital signs were normal. When she woke up, she was most concerned about Xander's health. He's fine, Justin thought about it and replied cautiously. Nora immediately sensed the meaning. That means something has happened. Justin sighed and rubbed his forehead. I only tested his intelligence and realized that it's gotten higher. His intelligence is even higher than Pete and Cherry's. Pete was an extremely smart child. Otherwise, he would not have learned the Math Olympiad questions at the age of five. Those questions were very difficult even for university students. Cherry was also a representative of high intelligence. She could not calm down. Nora could only let her play games to divert her attention and make her hyperactivity better over the years. Contrary to these two, Xander had always lived beside Truman. Nora did not know him very well. His intelligence surpassed Pete and Cherry's. Nora was silent for a moment before finally sighing deeply. Genetic medicine is indeed a good thing. Justin also nodded. This temptation is really too difficult for humans to resist. Who doesn't want to strengthen their bodies? Who doesn't want to have outstanding intelligence? We will definitely face many temptations in the future. At this point, he suddenly asked, Nora, if you successfully find the V-16, will you take it? Nora curved her lips and smiled. I'm already one of the smartest people in the world. Why bother? Besides, humans should respect evolution. 
The current level of human technology and research are not enough to support a sudden arrival of highly intelligent humans. Hearing her words, Justin smiled. What if that gene serum really succeeds and can extend one's life? Nora was fine. She had been a Buddhist her entire life. It was enough for her to have enough money to survive and have her relatives by her side. Furthermore, even if she passed away, she would only be sleeping endlessly. She was not scared of it. She waved her hand casually. Not interested. I'll change my clothes. Let's go see Xander. Okay. I L I. The two of them stood opposite each other. Nora looked at him for a long time before pointing at the door. Aren't you going out? Justin smiled. Our children are already five years old. We're a couple. Do you still care about this? Nora, this man was getting more and more shameless. She turned around and seemed to be walking to the cloakroom. When Justin strode forward, planning to follow her, she suddenly turned around and kicked him in the chest. Justin subconsciously stepped back and reached out to block, but he was kicked two steps back by Nora and he went straight out the door. The next moment, smash. The door was closed. Nora's cold and low voice came from inside. Be good. Wait outside. Tisk. Justin looked at his hand and could not help but laugh softly. Nora was actually shy. A minute later, Nora changed into a black windbreaker and went out. She seemed to prefer black. This coat was especially wide on her. Coupled with her slender figure, she looked especially stylish. As Justin watched, his eyes darkened. The two of them went downstairs and greeted Ian before leaving. On the way to the hunts to see Xander, Nora switched on her phone. She secretly turned to her side and opened the Imperial League chat group. She had originally planned to see what kind of investment opportunities there were, but as soon as she entered, she saw Bear mocking Eagle. Bear, if you don't have money, don't come making trouble next time at Eagle. Philip came back to his senses. He knew that he had been tricked into making a bid of $45 billion, but he did not dare vent his anger on King. So he aimed it at Joel. According to her brother's character, he would definitely ignore him. However, when Nora went out, she had seen that Ian had logged into his account, so the eagle in the group was now Ian. If it was Ian, then. Sure enough, there was an argument in the group. Eagle, why, are you getting angry out of humiliation? If you don't want to buy that 5% of the shares, you can transfer it to me. Hey, you regret buying it. You can't afford to lose, but you don't dare to argue with King. You only know how to talk big here. Nora, Ian's words were really provocative, but it was satisfying. Bear, hey, King sold his shares to me because he knew you didn't have the money. You don't have to sow discord here. I'll never have any objections to King. King should know that you can't afford them, so he sold his shares to me. Eagle, hee hee, 45 billion for 5% of the shares. Only a fool would buy it. What are you so proud of? Bear grabbed the opportunity immediately. What do you mean only fools would buy it? Are you saying that King tricked me? You're the one who's being disrespectful to King. Nora, it was all over. Ian was counter-attacked. In the end, King had sold his shares to Philip and not to Eagle. This showed his attitude. Besides, King had just received Philip's $45 billion. He was definitely biased toward Philip. Philip had just made a few casual remarks. Would King have something against Ian? King had a high status in Imperial League and his words were final. How was Ian going to talk in the group in the future? Nora frowned. Ian clearly sensed this too and said in the group, I have no objections to Mr. King. You're the one who started the argument today. Bear, you called me stupid for making the deal yesterday. Aren't you saying that King tricked me? At King, say something fair. Let King speak. If King spoke up, he would definitely side with Bear. Too late. Was there a need to think about that? Who would admit that they had scammed others when doing business? Nora pursed her lips and thought about how to say something in the group to draw this matter to an end. However, Philip began to be aggressive. Bear, purchasing 5% of the hunts, shares for $45 billion is indeed a few times higher than the market value. But Mr. King definitely has no intention of extorting me. Isn't it all because you're bidding against me here? This is a fair transaction. The highest bidder gets it. 
How can you judge Mr. King like this? Nora, Eagle, I have no doubts about Mr. King's impartiality. You don't have to sow discord here. Bear, who's sowing the discord here? Who brought this up in the group first? Mr. King, what do you think? At this moment, someone came out to agree. Rabbit, I swear that the highest bidder got it yesterday. There's no unfairness. Mr. King is absolutely fair in handling things. Wolf, Mr. King is absolutely fair. A row of people below echoed. Finally, Bear sent another message. Did you see that? Eagle, you should apologize to Mr. King and to me. The matter became heated. While Nora was anxious, the car arrived at the hunts. Nora was still thinking about what to do. At this moment, King, who had been silent all along, suddenly reacted. Chapter 729 King's Slap It was obvious that King had taken advantage of the two families fighting to raise the price in the deal three days ago. The final beneficiary was King. No matter how he looked at it, he could not admit that he had been unfair and had lied to Bear. Therefore, Philip was certain that King had targeted Ian in the group. The others could not say that the deal was unfair. Ian instantly became the target. If King were to appear now, he would definitely be on Philip's side. Nora was thinking about how to help Ian resolve the situation and make the atmosphere less awkward when she saw. King, would a normal person spend $45 billion on the hunts, shares that are only worth a few billions? The others echoed King and instantly sent a message to the group. Rabbit, King is right. Wolf, King is right. Nora was also typing a message. Eagle also isn't saying that King is unfair. It's clearly Bear who is stirring trouble in the group, she was typing and wanted to say a few words for Ian when she suddenly realized the meaning of King's message. She was stunned and confused. Why was this King acting a bit different than his usual self? He had clearly made a killing three days ago and taken advantage of Bear, but now he was still coming out to mock him. This was completely against his principle of peace. He was simply making enemies. Nora was taken aback. In the distant Smith Villa, Ian was stunned. He was prepared to express that this was not what he meant. At most, he would apologize to King and Bear. After all, everyone in the group was a big shot. Furthermore, in the past, even if King did not smooth things over, he did warn them to be careful with their words. But, why had King suddenly become so straight? When he said this, Ian was really stunned. Philip, who was overseas, was even more stunned. After spending $45 billion, he had actually been very unhappy. However, he did not dare to lose his temper at King, so he could only vent all his anger on Eagle. After all, Eagle was an American. Eagle might be Justin himself. During the period when Eagle joined the Imperial League, the Hunts were the number one family in New York. That's why he suddenly launched an attack on him in the group. The goal was to make everyone in the group reject him. Moreover, his account was one of the first six to join the Imperial League when it was established. Although he did not dare to be called the richest man in the world, since no one knew how much money King had, Philip was indeed invincible overseas. Even King had given him some face in the past. In the group, if King was first, Philip would be second. Therefore, no one had expected King to suddenly attack Philip. What did that mean? Philip was furious. King, did you send the wrong message? Or was your account hacked? What do you mean? Nora was also thinking about what King meant when she saw him throw another sentence into the group. It means that your IQ is very low. The group instantly fell silent. After all, if the first and second big shots fought, who would dare to interrupt? Even Ian was confused for a moment. King sent another message, I'm selling my shares to you not because. Eagle is poor, but because he's smarter than you and not easy to cheat. 4. In the Smith's villa, when Ian saw this sentence, he could not help but sit up straight. There was a look of satisfaction on his face from being recognized. He smiled and sent a message in the group. Eagle, Mr. King, you think too highly of me. King, you're worth it, sir. Everyone, why did the word, sir, suddenly become so meaningful? The people in the group instantly fell silent. In the past, Eagle did not receive much respect in the group. After all, he was considered a newcomer in the group. 
But now, King spoke so highly of Eagle. Could it be that King had instructed Eagle to raise the price yesterday and his goal was to cheat Bear? This. Bear was furious. King, what do you mean? King, what's the point of bullying a small family in New York? What are the principles of the Imperial League? You openly tried to break them, don't blame me for being merciless. The principles of the Imperial League. Nora thought about it. Imperial League's group page clearly said that they were not to bully the weak. But, first of all, was Justin weak? Secondly, over the years, Imperial League had wanted to expand its influence, so how could it not have bullied others? Everyone was in control of the global economy, so they were all fine. Why did King suddenly mention this principle? Everyone was confused. However, Philip was indeed Philip. Offending King would not end well for him. The reason King had dominant status in the group was that he was the leader. He was the one who was leading everyone forward step by step. Philip had to give him face. Therefore, when he saw that King had given a reasonable explanation, Philip did not dare to probe further. He lowered his head in the group. I forgot to explain. I have a personal grudge with the hunts. King, since it's a personal grudge, then these $45 billion are worth it. Bear, you're right. Through the screen, Nora could feel Philip's anger. However, his forbearance made Nora alert again. At Philip's level, it was easy for him to toy with people. Just like how he could imprison Iris for 20 years with one thought. However, it was precisely such a person who was used to being arrogant, but he was being so adaptable. He was indeed one of the rulers of the few mysterious families in the world. Seeing that there were no more messages in the group, Nora finally put down her phone. When she looked up again, she heard Cherry call out, Mommy, in a childish voice. Cherry was usually a bootlicker and had a sweet mouth, but she always felt that her words were not sincere. However, the one who was the most clingy to Nora was Cherry. After not seeing her for three days, the little fellow did not even play games anymore. She hugged Nora's thigh and did not let go. Mommy, I miss you so much, I didn't eat or drink well these past few days. Pete, who ran over with her, reminded her, that's called not wanting to eat or drink. Besides, I don't think you ate any less. Cherry immediately looked at him and explained boldly, that's why I didn't say I didn't eat, I said I didn't eat well. Pete. Nora touched Pete's head and then looked at Xander, who was sitting on the sofa and looking over eagerly. The little guy was very proud. He was clearly looking over, but he still pretended not to care. It was funny. Nora walked over and rubbed his head. Does Xander miss mommy? Tisk. Xander rolled his eyes. You're too mushy. I'm not that childish. Although he said that, he did not pull his head away from her. Pete immediately rolled his eyes. Then who is it that asks almost every day why mommy sleeps for so long? Xander. His face turned red instantly and he snorted. I was afraid she would die. You're not allowed to curse mommy. Cherry looked fierce. Pete frowned as well. Don't say such nonsense. How could mommy die? You're talking nonsense. Xander pursed his lips. I was just saying, it's not like she'd really, he still did not say the word, die. The three children huddled together and argued. It made Pete talk more. Cherry's ADHD had recovered even without gaming, and it also made Xander not hate this family so much. Nora checked Xander's body again. When she saw that he was fine, she finally heaved a sigh of relief. Justin still had some work matters to settle, so he went to the study. Nora was downstairs playing with the three children. She looked at Xander and suddenly asked, Xander, do you want to change your name? Xander was stunned and looked at her. What name should I change? There's no need to change it. It's meaningless. Nora hesitated and said, but you're Justin and my child. You can choose whether you want your surname to be Smith or Hunt. Xander immediately pursed his lips. I don't want my surname to be Smith. I don't want my surname to be Hunt either. Hearing this, Nora was stunned. Why? Xander's eyes instantly flickered. Sigh, why are you so annoying? I've been called Xander Yale for five years. Why do I have to change my name? I'm not changing. With that, he jumped up in anger and ran upstairs. Nora frowned. Why was Xander so sensitive and against changing his name? 
Was he hiding something, or was he still? Nora sighed silently. Truman had raised him for five years. If he still had feelings for Truman, it was really a headache. After all, she could not forcefully change Xander's thoughts and feelings. As she was thinking, Pete said, Mommy, don't be angry. I know why he doesn't want to change his name. Chapter 730 Taking Revenge for Xander Upon hearing what Pete said, Nora asked, Why? Pete sneaked a glance upstairs again, then he glanced at Cherry, who was hugging Nora's thigh, and coughed. Before Nora could say anything, Cherry said in her young and tender voice, I'm not leaving, Pete. I also wanna listen. Left with no other choice, Pete could only sigh silently. He glanced at the upper floor again before he finally said, when Xander woke up, he overheard some people's conversation. When Xander regained consciousness, his IQ had once again increased, and he also became more sensitive. The young child had never had his parents by his side since he was born. Although he had just returned to the family, he could nevertheless sense the family's servants' dislike of him. After all, he had really been very naughty previously. He pretended to be nonchalant on the surface but had been improving his behavior in private. He went to the lower floor to play with Cherry's childish dolls with her, and also accompanied Pete and worked on mathematical Olympiad problems together. In truth, he had also been working hard to integrate himself into the family. But the day before, he had simply been too bored. On top of that, the little guy liked to be secretive and sneaky in everything he did, so he had sneaked into the shared toilet used by the servants at home and eavesdropped on their conversations. This was because he had found out, after a search on the internet, that the toilet was where one could listen to the juiciest gossip. The little guy had squatted in the cubicle and listened to the men chatting outside. Did you notice that Xander's temper has improved recently? That's probably because Pete and Cherry are so well behaved that he has also become better behaved due to their influence. He grew up elsewhere, so he has an unruly temper, but he has reined himself in now. You'd better not say such things so carelessly. Mr. Hunt hates us talking about them in private. I know, aren't I just telling you? Well, no matter what the reason, you can say that Xander has been reformed, I suppose. But in that case, why hasn't Mr. Hunt changed his name? Or legally registered him as part of the family yet? Tisk, here, I'll explain that to you. This is just my speculation, but you see how Cherry's last name is Smith, right? In the future, she will probably inherit the assets that the Smiths leave for her mother. As for Pete, his last name is Hunt, and he has long been unofficially appointed as the future heir of the Hunts. If Xander changes his name, then should he take Smith or? Hunt is his last name. Are you saying that Mr. Hunt doesn't plan to give him any shares? Speaking of shares, do you know? The Hunts always have the final say in the Hunt Corporation because they have more than 50% of the shares firmly in their control. Although Herman and Justin have separated now, this must not happen to the next generation. Therefore, he will only give the shares to one person, so that he can guarantee that person's absolute rights and control of the Hunt Corporation. Will he give them to Xander? Or to Pete? Who knows? The purpose of Xander's sudden return is precisely to fight for company shares with Pete. Tisk, no wonder he suddenly came back when he has already been away for so many years. That's true, the Smith Corporation's shares are also a large sum of money. Even if Mr. Hunt doesn't give him any shares, Miss Smith definitely will. He's in for a windfall this time. Exactly, but little bastards like him can only fake good behavior, he definitely won't be able to change his personality deep down inside. No matter what he does, he won't be able to compare to Pete's gentlemanly demeanor. The two left the toilet as they chatted, leaving Xander dumbfounded and speechless inside. He walked out in a daze. As soon as he stepped out, he saw Pete, who was also standing outside. He must have heard what they said just now. Xander flushed at once. In particular, as he looked at Pete, he suddenly shouted, Don't worry, I'm not interested in the hunts, assets. I also don't have any interest in fighting for them with you. I will make all my money by myself in the future. After saying that, he pushed Pete away and ran to the villa. Later, even though he didn't quarrel with me, he didn't spend much time solving mathematical Olympiad problems with me anymore.
He has been playing games with Cherry the whole day today. Pete hung his head and spoke in disappointment. He must have also wanted very much for Xander to play with him. Cherry raised her head, her big dark eyes blinking as she said, really. Why didn't I notice anything? Two, two, Cherry was cute and was a sweet talker, but she was also very insensitive. It would be a wonder if she could sense the little boy's secretive thoughts. All she could do was just fight others in a battle of wits. In truth, she really was rather insensitive. However, it was also through the contrast between her and Pete that Nora had discovered something children who grew up with their mothers would indeed have a stronger sense of happiness. Look at Pete. He might openly say that Xander was sensitive, but wasn't he also just as sensitive? Otherwise, how would a five-year-old possibly contemplate so many problems? When Nora thought of this, as well as of the two servants' conversation, she felt a burst of anger. She lowered her head and looked down at Pete at once. Can you recognize the two servants who were talking behind your backs? Mommy, I have already looked into it. One could always rest assured with Pete's way of handling things. Despite his young age, he was already capable of taking every aspect into consideration. He said, the two of them are in charge of cleaning the garden in the backyard. One of them is Greg Lewis, the other one is Lionel Scott. They have been working for the hunts for three years. Nora, the corners of her lips spasmed and she couldn't help but ask, since you have already found out everything, then you must also have ways of dealing with them, so why haven't you taken any action? Pete's authority at home was not to be violated. Moreover, although the boy was mildly autistic, he was not stupid. On the contrary, he was very clever. Pete replied, Xander must be competing with me right now. Since everyone says that I am better than him, if I step forward to defend him, he will definitely feel even more uncomfortable. Besides, isn't it the parents' responsibility to protect their children? Pete looked at her eagerly, also, I think that Xander would prefer you to protect him instead. Nora, the corners of her lips spasmed. Faced with Pete like that, she suddenly said, Pete, be honest with me. Back then, when two of your private tutors bullied you, you hadn't resisted them. Is it because you had never thought of putting up any resistance? Pete lowered his head when he heard this. He initially didn't want to explain, but he suddenly felt like opening up in this instant. He nodded and answered, yes. At that time, I thought that I had brought harm to my grandmother, so I didn't feel like fighting back anymore. Nora heaved a quiet sigh. The boy was simply too sensitive. She took Pete's hand and walked straight out. Come on, let's go to the garden and look for the two of them. As for Cherry, her eyes swiveled a little and she let go of Nora's leg. Then, she ran upstairs. Mommy was about to unleash her prowess. How could she possibly not get Xander to watch a show as entertaining as that? How exciting, how thrilling, he he he, in the garden in the backyard. Two male servants were chatting as they swept the floor. I saw Pete yesterday. The look in his eyes when he looked at me was just so, why does it make me feel a little uneasy? What are you thinking? Pete never gets angry, it's fine. The other man whispered, say, do you think Pete overheard what we said that day? After all, he was standing right outside when we stepped out. Hey, so what even if he heard us? We are here as cleaners by Roger Hunt's recommendation. Can a kid like him even fire us? Besides, even if we are fired, we will still get a large sum of money. Chapter 731 Making False Counter Charges No, Roger Hunt put us here so that we can snoop around for news, but who would have thought that Mr. Hunt's supervision would be so strict? We have been here for three years, but we haven't found any useful news at all, sigh. If we are fired, he may not necessarily protect us. Don't worry needlessly. It'll only embarrass him if he doesn't protect us. Even if it's just to prevent himself from being embarrassed, he will still protect us. Besides, everything we said was favorable towards Pete. I don't think he will spread any nonsense. The two, who did not notice the people walking towards them from behind, continued speculating in low voices. Furthermore, Mr. Hunt can barely protect himself now. Now that his father has returned to fight for the company's ownership with him, he can't be bothered to deal with us. It's the safest for us right now. You're right, haha. <laughs> I wonder who will win, Mr. Hunter his father.
At the bottom of it all, it's all just because of Mrs. Hunt. Have you seen Mrs. Hunt? She doesn't look like a 50-year-old at all. You can easily say that she's 30, and even if you say she's 20, there will probably still be people who would believe it. How can someone be so beautiful? Women are trouble. It's precisely because she is so pretty that things went wrong. On top of that, she doesn't even look old at all. What else is she, if not a vixen? Shut up. Nora was originally planning to listen and see what else the two of them would talk about, but in the end, they changed the subject and started talking about Iris instead. This was intolerable. Her fierce bark gave the two men a shock. They turned back in unison to see Nora come up to them while holding Pete's hand. Nora's pretty face was tense, and there was faint anger and a pressurizing aura in her eyes. Added to this her tall and slender figure, which allowed her to stand at about the same height as the two men, her aura became increasingly strong. They were so scared that they hurriedly lowered their heads. Ms. Smith, they said. Nora narrowed her eyes and stared at them. Badmouthing your employers behind their backs, is that what your contracts asked of you? The Hunts, servants were mostly old-timers whom the Hunts were already accustomed to having around. Some of the old-timers' family members would also work there. Although there was no such thing as indentured servitude these days, their employers would never abuse them. In fact, they treated them very well, so most of the servants in the family were very loyal. There were some old-timers who received even better treatment, such as Fanny, who served the elderly Mrs. Hunt. She had served Mrs. Hunt her whole life, so the two were as close as sisters. However, the servants also knew that they should protect themselves, so all of them were hired on a contractual employment system. When the two servants were hired to clean the garden in the backyard three years ago, they had also signed employment contracts. Thus, their job scope and job requirements would definitely be stated in detail in the contracts. The two servants looked at each other in fright. One of them said boldly, Ms. Smith, you must have misheard. We didn't badmouth our employers. The other man also recovered from his shock and stammered, Why yes, he's right. We didn't talk about our employers behind their backs. We were talking about another family, you must have misheard. Nora, they were really just so, were they pretending that nothing had happened when they had already been caught red-handed? She lowered her eyes. She couldn't be bothered to say anything else to the two, so she immediately said, you should know very well whether or not you've talked about your employers behind their backs just now. As for Pete and I, we were standing right here. Hey, are you going to take the initiative to resign? Or do you want me to get someone to fire you? Nora was very aggressive. If it's the latter, then I'm afraid the two of you will end up being blacklisted. You don't need me to explain the consequences of that, right? Should they be blacklisted, no one would employ them when they went job hunting in the future. Besides, Pete raised his head. In his big eyes, which looked just like cherries, was not the latter's cheeky cuteness but instead a scheming look. In his young and tender voice, he said, Mommy, why are you letting them off? If we tell Daddy, the two of them will be in for it. What Nora said had already intimidated the two servants just now, so when they heard what Pete said, the two immediately fell onto the ground in fright. One of them said, Sir Pete, we realize our mistake now, sob. Nora stroked Pete's hair. Forget it, everyone makes mistakes. Let's forgive them wherever possible. Upon hearing what she said, the two servants looked at each other, both swallowing hard. One of them said, T thank you, Miss Smith. W we will leave by ourselves. Nora nodded and pointed at the door. Get out. The two nodded. Then, they turned around and walked out. When they disappeared from the garden, Xander's voice traveled over. HMPH, are you letting them off so easily? You are such a weakling and a pushover. Nora cast her eyes down and heaved a silent sigh. She squatted down and looked at Xander. You are still young, so you don't understand how important jobs are to people. Now that the two of them have lost their jobs, they will find even feeding themselves a problem. This is already a very severe punishment. Xander had grown up with Truman. Nora didn't want him to become too narrow-minded. She wanted him to learn to be kind to others. Xander sneered, even so, that won't do. Their punishment is too light. Cherry blinked. 
She didn't understand the ins and outs of what had happened, but even so, she immediately retorted, Don't talk nonsense, mommy must have her reasons for doing what she did. Mommy will definitely punish them for you. Pete explained, Xander, don't worry. Do you think they will have it easy after they resign? Mommy has already said that jobs are very important to them. Do you think that people who can never find a job again in the future will be able to enjoy life? To be honest, punishment for talking ill of others behind their backs shouldn't have been so severe. However, since they were Roger's pawns, how would Nora possibly be that kind? Moreover, Pete explained further, Mommy can't openly do anything to them because this is a society governed by laws. They are just people that our family had hired, they are not our slaves. Besides, we don't actually have the right to fire them. His last sentence stunned both Cherry and Xander. Both of them asked in unison, why? Because, before he could finish, footsteps came from the garden's entrance again and Roger walked in with the two servants. Roger had a smile on his face as usual. As soon as he entered, he said cheerfully, Oh my, who is this? Isn't this Justin's fiancé? What's wrong? How did these two bastards make you so angry that you lost your temper so badly? The rest of Pete's words were cut off by him. He looked at Cherry and Xander, held their hands, and whispered, That mean Uncle Roger will tell you the reason. Both Cherry and Xander looked at Roger in confusion. Roger's eyes were narrowed, but he had a very gentle and amiable expression on his face. He said, Nora, you haven't even married into the family, yet you are already throwing your weight around in the hunts, residence. Isn't that quite inappropriate? Besides, what exactly have these two people done wrong? They kept crying and crying, so I couldn't understand what they were saying. They are, after all, people whom I recruited into the family, so you have to give me a reason for dismissing them no matter what, right? The hunts are reasonable people, we mustn't bully them just because they are weak and powerless. At the sight of him, Nora cast her eyes down slightly. She said dispassionately, they badmouth their employers behind their backs. Isn't this reason enough? Roger immediately replied, what? They actually had the audacity to badmouth their employers behind their backs. The reason is enough, of course. It is clearly written in the employee contract that they are not allowed to talk about their employers behind their backs, let alone divulge news and information about them to outsiders. After saying this, he looked straight at the two servants. How can you make such a mistake when you know full well that you're not supposed to do that? If the two of you have really badmouthed your employers behind their backs, then you will certainly have to be fired. In addition, you will also have to return the wages paid to you during the past three years as compensation. The moment Lionel and Greg heard this and noticed the look Roger was giving them, they got the hint. They shouted, Mr. Roger, we are innocent. Roger snorted coldly, you're innocent. What's the use of you crying foul here? Since my sister-in-law has said that the two of you did badmouth your employers, then she definitely has evidence to back it up. Otherwise, she would never make any baseless accusations. He then looked at Nora with a smile and said, Nora, where's the evidence? If you can produce the evidence, then I will deal with these two people right away. Pete sighed silently and explained to Cherry and Xander, you saw that, right? America has labor protection laws. Even if you want to fire an employee for misconduct, you have to produce evidence of their misconduct first. Xander was perplexed. After all, he had grown up in a basement and didn't know much about human relations. He asked, but didn't you and mommy hear them? Cherry, however, had understood by then. She stamped her foot and said angrily, Tisk, Xander, why are you so stupid? We did hear them, but they can also counter us by saying that we are lying. We have to produce factual evidence as proof. No wonder mommy only threatened those two into resigning just now. As it turns out, it's because mommy doesn't have any actual evidence. By this point, Xander had also understood. A look of deep thought appeared on his countenance. So that's how it is. On the other side, Roger was still looking at Nora. Seeing that she was keeping quiet with her eyes narrowed, he smiled and said, Nora, where's the evidence? Show us the evidence. Surely you do have evidence, right? Lionel and Greg changed their tunes at once. Mister. Roger, we really didn't speak ill of others behind their backs. 
Miss Smith is just slandering us because she doesn't like us. You mustn't fire us. If you really do so, then we will sue you and go for judicial arbitration. The labor law will protect us. Upon hearing what they said, Roger looked at Norris Mugley. Seeing this, Xander whispered, are we going to drop the whole thing just like that? Xander might not understand anything else, but he did understand one thing, and that was. Nora wanted to take action against those two people, and if she failed, it would be very embarrassing for her. Cherry, however, blinked and said with a smile, no way. Does mommy look like such a weakling to you? Xander. Chapter 732 Who says I don't have any evidence? Nora hadn't even married into the family, yet she was already punishing the hunts, servants who had bullied her son. To be honest, if news of the incident spread, it really wouldn't sound very nice. On top of that, the worst thing was that she didn't even succeed in doing so, which would only serve to make it look even more like she was not respected at the hunts, residence. This was exactly Roger's objective. He had fought Justin for the position of the head of the family for a lifetime, yet he'd never been able to obtain the position all this time. Now that he finally had the opportunity to make trouble for him, Roger was really giving it his all. He looked at Nora triumphantly and said, Nora, you may be Justin's fiancé, but it's not right of you to do that. Without any evidence, how can you fire the servants so carelessly? We are no longer in ancient times. The servants are also humans, we are all equal here. We have signed contracts between us. If you must fire them, sure. You'll just have to pay them additional wages as compensation. Shall I ask the finance department to give them the extra wages and then dismiss them? Dismissing them with extra wages would be tantamount to admitting that the two servants hadn't made any mistakes, but were dismissed purely because Nora didn't like them. Should news of it spread, wouldn't it still end up as Nora abusing her authority? Those sure were some nice plans that Roger had made. Nora still looked as calm and dispassionate as ever. Seeing Roger's stance, she looked straight at the two servants. With a contemptuous smile on her lips, she asked, are the two of you really not going to take the initiative to resign? Lionel and Greg hurriedly shook their heads. We really didn't do anything wrong, how can we resign? Yeah, you can just say so if you don't like us, Miss Smith. You can fire us, but surely you can't be so bossy as to force us to resign, right? The more they spoke, the more aggrieved the two of them became, which attracted people nearby to gather around them. A group of servants hired by the hunts had gathered at the back door to the garden and were watching the excitement. Roger glanced behind him, his men among the crowd immediately started to fan the flames. He said, Ms. Smith, you haven't married into the family, right? What right do you have to deal with the hunt's servants? Yes, besides, servants are also humans. What makes you think you can be so overbearing? There's equality in the society now, you can't look down on us. We are just working for the hunts, there's no other relationship between us. Your actions are really disappointing. Yeah, Miss Smith, you are too much. Nora raised her eyebrows and looked at them without speaking. The dispute quickly reached the few masters of the hunts. Soon, Iris came over. When she entered, she immediately reprimanded the servants gathered there. What are all of you doing gathered around here? Go and do what you should be doing. When the rest of the servants heard her, they subconsciously wanted to leave. However, Roger said, you can't put it that way, Aunt Iris. Aren't they all servants? They just want to see whether our family will treat them fairly. The hunts, hundred years of good reputation mustn't be ruined by Nora today. Roger's men also spoke up at once. Yes, we are going to stay right here. Greg, Lionel, don't be afraid. Sometimes, we just have to stand up strong and safeguard our interests. We and the hunts are just employer and employees, we don't have a master-servant relationship here. Make no mistake about it, guys. Exactly, we are not slaves. Slavery has long been overthrown. It's the era of peace and democracy now. 2. 11. The rest of the servants were manipulated into thinking that Nora had bullied the servants and was looking down on them. As a result, people from the other villas also started to echo them. The bigger the commotion became, the more people started to gather. Iris frowned and reprimanded them at once. It's working hours right now, what are all of you staying here for? 
go back to your respective workstations at once. Although Iris had only moved back into the hunts, Manor for a few days, with the help of Justin, she had already taken over the hunts, housekeeping rights shortly after she moved back in. Besides, the woman was simply too beautiful, so much so that she had a unique aura around her. It made one unable to hate her or dislike her. Everyone did like listening to their beautiful employer, so they decided to leave. But when they were about to leave, another voice traveled over, Iris, now that's not right of you to say that. Who would still be in the mood to work when something like this has happened? Haven't they already all gathered here? Since that is the case, then, in my opinion, why not just handle this incident in an open and fair manner? Along with the voice, Lauren walked over gracefully. Her hip twisted from side to side as she walked over. When she came forward in front of the crowd, she looked at Nora with a smile and asked Iris, are you going to protect your daughter-in-law? Or are you going to protect your employees? With a single sentence, she put Nora and all of the hunts, servants on opposing sides. As expected, she sure was impressive. Nora raised her eyebrows and looked at Lauren. On the way to the manor, Justin had already told her that ever since Herman came into possession of the Hunt Corporation's shares, he and Lauren had moved back into the Hunt's manor. In addition, Herman wanted Iris to give up her housekeeping rights to Lauren. Mrs. Hunt was already very old. While she took the medicine that Nora made, she also turned a blind eye to all these things. But because of Herman and the fuss he'd kicked up, Lauren's speaking rights at home had suddenly increased. There were now faint signs that she could contend with Iris. And sure enough, as soon as she heard that something had gone wrong with Nora, she had hurried over immediately. At the sight of her, Iris frowned in disgust. What do the affairs in Justin's villa have to do with you? Lauren sighed at once. Now that's not right of you to say that, Iris. No matter what, I am still Herman's lawful wife, whereas Miss Smith and Justin are not married yet. Besides, we are all part of the hunts here, of course I'd have to be concerned about the hunts, reputation. News of Herman and Justin fighting for shares has already become the talk of the city that's not a bad thing, though, because the Hunt Corporation's shares have skyrocketed as a result, but at a time like this, we mustn't allow any negative news from within the family to become exposed. Things like bullying and oppressing servants and nannies must not happen. Besides, the servants and nannies are here to help us and take care of us, everyone is a friend. We mustn't have arrogant and unreasonable employers who carelessly bully the servants. Her words had completely put herself on the moral high ground. All the servants around them, no matter who it was, clapped when they heard her. Iris was very calm. She said, don't you dare sow discord here. When have I ever said that the servants are treated as lower class humans? Neither do I have any intentions to suppress them. Lauren, don't bother diverting the conflict with your words. The incident today is purely between Nora and those two people, it has nothing to do with anyone else. Besides, judging from what you said, are you saying that as long as they are part of the weak and powerless, they will always be right? Even Herman had to be punished and driven out of the hunts when he made a mistake back then, let alone them. Everyone is a human here. Why can't they be punished when they have made a mistake? Iris had never been a coward or someone who allowed others to bully her. She was articulate and eloquent from the start, and she easily refuted Lauren with just a few words. Lauren curled her lips disdainfully and sneered, Iris, you keep saying that they have made mistakes, but what mistakes did they make? Surely the hunts can't drive them out of the house just because Ms. Smith casually made some false accusations about them without any proof, right? In that case, if I find someone an eyesore in the future, does that mean I can also casually accuse them of stealing money without any evidence and then drive them out? Is the labor contract nothing but an ornament? Iris scoffed, of course it isn't, neither do I dare treat it as one. However, families have family rules of their own. Let's go by the book today. Go by the book. The way I see it, aren't the rules and regulations here completely dictated by the two of you? Iris, if you can't produce any evidence today, then I think you'd better not manage the household affairs anymore. You're making too big a mess here. Lauren stepped forward and said very arrogantly, I, however, don't mind giving myself a little work and taking care of the family. 
As she spoke, the corners of Nora's lips curled into a smile. With the way you twist the truth and how you condone the servants speculating about their employers, why should you manage the family? Lauren scoffed, you insist that they were speculating about their employers, but what did they say? Do you have any evidence? The most hateful thing here is you spreading rumors when you don't have any evidence. Iris, in my opinion, a daughter-in-law like Nora is simply too unreasonable. You'd better carefully reconsider the marriage with the Smiths, and not let Justin take such an unreasonable wife who has the audacity to run amok at home when she doesn't even have any evidence. Just as Iris was about to speak, Nora said contemptuously, who says I don't have any evidence? Chapter 733 to 3 Face Slapping Her emotionless one-liner took Lauren aback for a moment. But right after, she recovered. How could Nora possibly have any evidence? If she had any, then she would have already produced it as soon as Roger came over. She was probably just being stubborn by saying something like that now. Besides, the two of them had only chatted casually with each other a little. Outsiders hadn't heard them, so how would she have any evidence? Lauren snorted. What kind of evidence can you possibly have? Nora raised her brows. Suddenly, she took out her phone and played a video it was a conversation between Lionel and Greg. Also, it didn't just include their conversation from just now, but also what Pete had overheard them saying in the toilet that day. When they were coming over, Pete had been worried that they would deny the allegations, so he had passed the recording to Nora. After they arrived, Nora had deliberately stood behind the two and listened to their conversation for a very long time before she finally stepped forward, just so she could obtain the evidence. How would Pete and Nora possibly not have a plan B? As for why she hadn't said anything just now, Nora had been waiting for Lauren to come over and confront Iris. By producing the evidence at this moment, she was giving Lauren a slap in the face. The recording finished playing. Nora had specially removed the part where the two of them called Iris a vixen after all, the fact that they had badmouthed about their little masters was already enough. There was no need to publicly poke fun at the elders. There was now solid evidence of Greg and Lionel talking about their employers behind their backs. In addition, they had even said such nasty things about them. Their outcome was now a foregone conclusion. Lauren's expression immediately changed after the recording finished playing. She broke into a frown. Then, she immediately changed her tune. Ms. Smith, if you had evidence of what they did, then why didn't you produce it earlier? By doing so, aren't you causing misunderstandings among us? Nora did not need to reply to her because Iris had already done that for her. Iris said, Tisk, if she had produced it earlier, then how would we have seen that side of you just now? Lauren, you covet the hunts, housekeeping rights, yet you can't even distinguish right from wrong. How can the hunts, housekeeping rights be given to you? You'd better just keep Herman happy instead. Lauren, her face alternated between being as pale as a sheet and as red as a tomato. In particular, Iris lecturing her from a higher position felt especially unbearable for her. She was a mistress turned lawful wife, so her status in the family was low from the start. And now, she had been thoroughly embarrassed by someone else. She clenched her fists angrily. On the other side, Roger immediately said, Tisk, look at you, Nora. If you had produced the evidence earlier, I would have dealt with these two people right away. All right, since there is now evidence, rest assured that I will drive them out of the house. In addition, no one out there will dare to hire them ever again. After saying this, Roger kicked the two men's butts and said, get lost. He took the two men with him and slipped off with his tail between his legs. It was only when he left the garden that he came to a stop. After getting someone to take Greg and Lionel away, he looked at the upper floor. Where Justin's study was, despite curtains blocking the view, he could see a tall and lean figure standing there. A sharp look flashed in Roger's eyes. The person next to him asked, Mr. Roger, what are you looking at? Roger sneered, I'm looking at that man and wondering why he's so lucky to find such a smart wife. In the garden, after Roger left, the rest of the servants, who had realized what happened, dispersed and returned to their respective posts to work. For a while, only the masters of the house were left in the garden. 
A triumphant cherry was singing praises of Nora to Xander. Did you see that? Mommy is the most powerful person on earth. No one can escape her clutches once she decides to fight. A silent Nora looked at her daughter. She was about to make a dry remark about how Cherry was probably the only one who would talk about her like that when she noticed Xander looking at her with his eyes all bright and shiny. Last time, Mommy had defeated those two bodyguards who could kill even Butterscotch, and now, she'd taken revenge for him. Xander could only sigh and marvel inwardly, Mommy was simply too amazing. Despite his thoughts, though, he didn't dare to express them. When Nora looked over, he immediately reigned in his look of worship and adopted a cool expression again. He grinned and scoffed, what's the big deal? Yes, that's right. Nora's lip corners curled into a smile and she said, keep calm and carry on. Xander. He looked at Cherry blankly. What does that mean? Is it an idiom? Cherry, however, was very familiar with internet lingo and memes. The little fellow shook her head and replied, No, what mommy means is, these are all small matters to her, so just act normal and don't be too impressed. Xander. Pete. As expected, only women understood other women. While the four of them were talking to one another in low voices, Iris and Lauren had reached the point of dishing out tough talk. Lauren stared at Iris. After her expression changed a few times, she finally sneered and said, Ha, you can't deal with me by yourself, so you got yourself a helper. Iris was unfazed. Well, at least I have someone I can ask for help. What about you? What, did the old madam not help you? Lauren, bringing up that topic was no different from stabbing a knife straight into her heart. Mrs. Hunt valued status and family background the most. One must know that Iris was a model young lady of a wealthy family, whereas Lauren was just an ordinary person. Therefore, Mrs. Hunt had already disliked her intensely back then. This time, even though Mrs. Hunt had taken Herman's side on the surface, in private, she actually leaned more towards Justin. At least, with regard to housekeeping rights, Mrs. Hunt hadn't made any trouble this time. Of course, this also showed that Nora and Justin's efforts some time ago hadn't been in vain. The old lady did indeed understand some things now and had become more reasonable. Lauren balled up her fingers in anger. A while later, though, she loosened them. She said straight to Iris, Yes, I may not be valued, but no matter how unvalued I am, at the very least, I won't impede Herman. But I can't say the same for you, can I? You're a vixen with bothersome debts everywhere. You're the one who brought the hunts to a point where father and son have turned against each other. Iris, if I were you, I would be ashamed to even stay in the hunt manor. How come you have the cheek to do so? Her words made Iris choke. Nora, however, immediately retorted, Tisk, Lauren, we are all women here, why are you victim blaming? Is Aunt Iris at fault just because she's good looking? Whereas you're right because your looks are average. What kind of reasoning is that? You. Lauren stretched out her finger and pointed at Nora angrily. But even after a while, she still couldn't find anything to rebut her with. As such, she could only shout, just you wait. The hunts will be Herman sooner or later, and when that happens, all of you will be driven out of the house. And you, cherish your last moments with your son. Philip has already called Herman last night, the two of them are planning to join forces. Let's see what your outcome will be like in the end. She left immediately after saying that. Upstairs. Inside Justin's study. The corners of Justin's lips curled into a smile as he watched Nora stand up for his mother and publicly slap Lauren in the face for her. It would be too low class of him to interfere in the household affairs. He'd better let the women settle their own affairs instead. At this moment, his cell phone suddenly rang. When he answered, Philip's voice came from the other side, Young man, do you admit your mistakes? Justin raised his brows and sat on the sofa. His voice was calm as he said, No. Philip sneered, As expected, you really are young and brazen. Do you have any idea what you are about to lose? Without money, even your lover will leave you. Justin replied, She won't. Philip sneered, She won't. That's because you're not there yet. Didn't your mother leave me back then precisely because she thought I was poor? Justin suddenly said, No, it's because you were not worth her trust. 
If one concealed the fact that they were rich, and continued to test their girlfriend instead of helping her even in her most desperate time of need, people like that deserved to lose their girlfriend. Philip paused. Then, he said sinisterly, Very well, you have thoroughly offended me. Young man, do you know the consequences of that? Justin raised his eyebrows. Of course he did. The consequences were that Philip had lost $45 billion, of course. Before he could speak, Philip spoke again. Do you know who you have offended or not? Justin lay down lazily. Well, no, I really don't. His understatement-like tone made Philip choke. It was only a short while later that he finally asked, Do you know of the Imperial League? Chapter 734 What should Xander's last name be? Justin smiled. No, I've never heard of it. His words seemed to make Philip choke, and even his choice of words became less harsh. He said, How come you don't know anything at all, young man? How exactly did you manage to expand the hunts to their current size? The way I see it, the Smiths should have taken over as the number one family a long time ago. His words gave Justin the illusion that the man seemed to be mentoring him a little. Philip continued to speak fiercely. The Imperial League is the most mysterious business organization in the world. There are twelve members in it, and they each use a different animal as an alias. They can dominate world economy trends because they have the sharpest intuition and they are sensitive enough to discern world development trends and pick up improvements in technology. Some time ago, the Imperial League had said that the real estate market in America will undergo rapid development, so everyone went to America to take their share of the loot. Now, the Imperial League says that the real estate market will go into decline, Whereas new energy and technology will usher in all-around development, so everyone is starting to invest in those. At this point, Philip said, don't be mistaken and think that it's the Imperial League members who are influencing the direction of the world. Rather, this is the inevitable trend of social development. The Imperial League is just going along with the trend. But with such a group of forward-looking people in there, our twelve families will never meet with any trouble. We will always be in the leading positions in the world. The hunts don't even know about the Imperial League, you'll be eliminated by society and become out of touch sooner or later. Hey, if you don't find a way to join the Imperial League, then you can wait to be utterly crushed by me. Justin, if it had only been an illusion earlier, then he was now sure of it Philip was pointing him to a way out. From beginning to end, Philip had never wanted them dead. Justin fell silent for a moment. Suddenly, he spoke, his term of address for Philip also becoming a little more respectful. Uncle Philip, you actually don't hate my mother at all, do you? His one-liner made Philip choke. After a while, he sneered, how can that be? I hate her with every fiber of my being. For the sake of a mere eighty thousand dollars, she abandoned me. Ha, huh, in the face of money, our relationship is not worth anything. Justin, however, said, you could have killed me when you kidnapped me back then. Wouldn't that have pained and saddened my mother even more than separating me from her? Why bother waiting to save me after twelve hours? Philip didn't speak. Justin spoke again. You were just waiting for my mother to give in and approach you for help. Were you waiting for her to apologize and bow down to you? Philip sneered, boy, you talk too much. Justin let out a low laugh and said no more. However, he'd already understood. Philip really did love his mother very much. It was true that Philip also hated his mother, but in the face of love, most of his hatred had been offset. Even though he'd punished his mother like that, he had never wanted to kill her. This showed that he had never really thought of hurting her. Perhaps. Justin lowered his eyes. He couldn't help but start wondering. When Herman realized the truth back then, if he had protected and defended his wife aggressively instead of giving her away, perhaps Philip would not have been so persistent but chosen to let go instead. Because sometimes, the best way of showing one's love was to let go. It must have been Herman's choice that had made him even angrier and even more disappointed, right? Iris had abandoned him for a man like that. When Justin put himself in the other man's shoes and thought about it, he immediately understood Philip's indignation and selfish motives back then. Even though he was the one who had caused his family tragedy, in this instant, Justin instead hated Herman even more, not Philip. He lowered his head and suddenly asked, 
Uncle Philip, do you know what led to your failure back then? Philip was silent for a while. Then, he sneered, as a kid like you planning to teach me how to behave. Justin ignored his sarcasm and spoke earnestly. Love can withstand trials, but it cannot stand being constantly put to the test. You and mom were in a relationship with each other for three years in college. When you were a poor boy, she had already chosen you. Doesn't that already show that she isn't someone who detests the poor and pursues the rich? Yet you still deceived her after that, putting her to the test again and again. That could have only ended in tragedy. There hadn't been any misunderstanding between Philip and Iris. What there was between the two of them was just a sense of resignation. Back then, Iris's father had forced her into marrying Herman by threatening to not pay for her mother's medical treatment. At that time, Iris had tried approaching Philip for help. She had asked him if he had any money, and if he could pay for her mother's medical expenses for her. A person who had been wealthy since he was a child wasn't something that others could compare to. No matter how hard he pretended to be poor, there would always be traces of his true origin. Iris must have suspected it before, right? Yet, Philip had taken the opportunity to put her to one last test and made her choose between her mother and him. If Iris could abandon even her seriously ill mother for their relationship, then he would never ever distrust her again. Unfortunately, Iris did not dare to take any chances in the end. She had chosen her mother. Philip suddenly became angry. Love is the purest thing in this world, it should not be mixed with any kind of interests or impurities. Your mother is a person who shirks her responsibility in love, that's why she met a man like your father. A man who can't even withstand a single test. Philip was a very extreme man. Justin snorted. If mom could only choose one between her mother and her lover, yet she chose you and decided to let my grandma die, how could someone like that even exist? Why not? Back then, I, Philip pulled the brakes in time at this point. He sneered, hey, you think I was in the wrong, right? In that case, what about you? Can your relationship withstand a test? Justin raised his eyebrows. I never put such things to the test. Neither do I ever put human nature to the test. Do you never put it to the test, or are you just afraid of putting it to the test? Philip provoked him. Isn't your current situation exactly a trial? Now that you are in a pinch, how are the Smiths reacting? They must still be showing you full support, right? So, you're moved. Is that it? Shall we make a bet? Justin smiled. What kind of bet? We'll make a bet on the Smiths' reaction after you lose. We'll see if they will let their young lady marry you after you lose. And make a bet on whether your fiancé will still marry you or not. Justin lowered his eyes. I won't lose. Philip sneered, having confidence is good, but arrogance will only blind oneself. There is no lack of people who are stronger and more powerful than you in this world. Do you think you are already number one in the world just because you've flourished the hunts? You are nothing in front of anyone from the Imperial League. Thanks for the advice. Who's giving you advice? Justin, I'll wait for you and Iris to bow down to me. There will come a day when you'll come begging to me. Philip was probably livid. After saying that, he hung up the phone at once. Justin stared at the phone. His anger towards Philip from before slowly dissipated. At this moment, he heard voices from outside. A smile formed on his face and he walked out of the study. As soon as he exited the room, he saw Nora and Iris bringing the three children upstairs. At the sight of him, Cherry ran over first. Daddy. The two boys, Pete and Xander, were more reserved. They walked up to him docilely. Pete said, Daddy. Xander pursed his lips and muttered unwillingly, Daddy. Seeing his awkward behavior, Justin squatted down and looked at him at eye level. He asked, Xander, can we now change your name? Upon hearing this, Nora knew at once that Justin must have seen everything that happened just now. She curled her lips disdainfully. That stinky man was such a sweet talker. He must have asked her over so that she could help Iris out, ha. Huh? Despite her thoughts, she looked at Xander with concern. Suddenly, she smiled and suggested, how about adopting my last name and being a smith too? Justin didn't object. Adopting smith as your last name works too. Xander, I've thought of a few names for you. Would you like to test them out? Xander looked at the five faces around him. 
All of them had concern in their eyes, which made him a little uncomfortable. But after he thought about it, he still said, I don't want to take Hunt as my last name, lest those people say that I came back to fight for family assets. With Pete. Ha, huh, I'm not interested in that bit of assets at all. I will make my own money when I grow up. Justin echoed him. Aha, uh -huh, so let's change your last name to Smith. Xander glanced at Nora. Then, he lowered his head and said, I, I don't want to take Smith as my last name either. The few of them were surprised. Xander rolled his eyes. Does it really matter what my last name is? Nora thought for a while. Not really, it seems. Then that's it, right? After saying that, Xander turned around and ran straight to his room. After entering, he locked the door from inside. The little fellow sighed silently. At this moment, his cell phone rang suddenly. When he answered, Truman's voice came from the other side. Hello, Xander, it's Daddy. Chapter 735 The Board of Directors Hearing that familiar voice, Xander's pupils shrank greatly. Yet, a sense of longing suddenly welled up in him, and he said into the phone, Daddy, I miss you. Even if there really were problems with the way Truman taught Xander, Xander had ultimately still been brought up by him during the past five years. In the hunt manner, Xander had to be subjected to so many people's negative attitudes towards him. It was only with Truman that he was the one and only person who mattered. As soon as he said that, Truman scoffed and said, you miss me. Then why don't you come back? I will arrange for someone to pick you up. Xander paused. Upon seeing his reaction, Truman said, See, I knew you wouldn't come back once you've met your real parents. Even though you say that you miss me, your actions say otherwise, because you have already integrated into their family, right? Xander lowered his head. Daddy, I won't forget you. But he wasn't going to go back there anymore. From the moment he left the basement, he had never wanted to go back. Besides, he had only thought of going back earlier because of the animals. However, Truman had surprisingly sent them all to him. This freed Xander from his last scruples. Truman didn't force him to return, though. He merely asked, have you changed your name? Xander replied, no. Tisk, considering Justin Hunt's personality, would he tolerate you having Yale as your last name? I am a villain in their eyes after all. It won't make you much of a better person if your last name is also Yale. Xander wanted to explain on behalf of Justin, but he said nothing in the end. By then, Truman had already changed the subject. He asked, how's your mother? Xander didn't understand his question, so he answered, she's fine. What about it? Nothing. Truman wanted to say more, but someone suddenly knocked on the door it was Cherry. She called out, Xander, come on out. It's time to eat. The food today smells really delicious. They prepared your favorite chicken drumsticks. Upon hearing this, Xander said to the person on the other end of the phone call, Daddy, I'm going to eat. After he said that, he hung up right away, opened the door, and ran out. In another country. In a dark room somewhere. As Truman listened to the disconnected tone in his cell phone, he muttered, That brat, how dare he hang up on me. He's so heartless. Caleb's amicable voice then rang out. It's not like you treat him well either. Now that he has found his real parents, he's not going to come back for sure. Truman's voice rose instantly. How did I not treat him well? I was even the one who saved his life. Caleb sighed. Yes, okay, you saved him, but after that, you locked him up in the basement. Of course he's going to be more comfortable there. He needs to lead a normal life too. Ha, huh. Truman said sulkily, your coughing seems to have eased a lot. Caleb nodded. Yeah, it got much better after I took the medicine. At the very least, I won't have to suffer for the next three months. I probably also won't have to suffer before I leave for good. You're such bad luck. Dot. After the family of six had lunch, Cherry, Pete, and Xander played together in the living room. The three little guys didn't have the habit of taking naps but watching them made Nora sleepy. Nora, who was staying so that she could spend more time with Xander, leaned against the sofa and watched them. At the same time, she mulled over where her mother would most likely put the V-16. At this time, Justin sat next to her and sighed. Xander is still a little estranged from us. 
We'll have to spend a lot of time with him to improve that. Nora nodded. Yeah, Justin looked at her eagerly. So, why don't you just move in and stay here for now? Nora, she raised her eyebrows and looked at Justin. Justin immediately made a vow. I'm really just saying this for the children's sake. Don't worry, I won't harbor any inappropriate thoughts about you. His attitude, which outright revealed everything he wanted to hide, simply rendered Nora speechless. The corners of her lips spasmed. When she looked back at the children, she saw that Cherry, Pete, and Xander were all staring at her, as though they were all waiting for her answer. Nora pretended to consider the suggestion. Cherry immediately said, Pete, how come other kids' parents can all live together, but ours can't? Sigh, we must really be the most pitiful children in the world. Xander asked, must everyone's parents live together? Wouldn't it be very crowded if they sleep on the same bed? Pete hurriedly interrupted Xander. He said, but it's warm when you're squeezed together. I like to sleep with everyone snuggled up together. After the three children spoke, they continued to look at Nora eagerly. Nora, she looked away, upon which she saw that Justin was also looking at her. As such, she could only look away again, yet when she did, she saw that even Iris was staring at her from the stairs as if she was eavesdropping on them. Nora heaved a silent sigh and said, Never mind, I'll just stay here for tonight then. Yay. That's awesome. Mommy, sleep with us tonight. Cherry flailed about and danced with excitement. Although Pete and Xander didn't say anything, the two boys' eyes had lit up. It was apparent that they were also very happy. Justin's lips also curled into a smile. At this moment, Lawrence strode into the room. When he saw Justin, he said respectfully, Boss, Mr. Hunt has just proposed holding a board of directors meeting, so that they can re-elect the president of the Hunt Corporation. Justin sneered when he heard Lawrence. Suddenly, he asked, So, he's become certain that he has 50% of the total shares. Herman only had 5% of the company's shares. He also bought some during the last few days at a high price, nearly spending all the money he'd earned abroad. Raymond and his family had also expressed their full support for him. With the addition of some other shareholders as well. Lawrence smiled. He has been going around the last few days, so he has likely convinced some of them to take his side. As per your instructions, our men have also agreed to support him, so he is very confident now. Additionally, he has also been going around telling everyone that the Hunt Corporation is a place where only your words go. Justin sneered, then let's see on that day just how many people are really in support of him. Lawrence nodded. Then, he said, however, it seems like he received a call from Philip today. The latter clearly expressed his support for him, and has also handed over the 5% of company shares he owns. Lawrence had a smile on his face when he said this. Justin nodded. After Lawrence finished reporting all the work matters, he left at once. Nora rolled her eyes and immediately understood everything when she saw the two men's interaction. She knew it, there was no way that Guy would ever allow himself to become stuck in a disadvantageous situation. He definitely had a plan B lying in wait. In order to gauge and evaluate which of the hunts were disloyal, he was dangling 5% of the shares as bait so that he could clean them all out in one fell swoop. He sure knew how to go with the flow. On the surface, he seemed like he was stuck in a difficult situation, but in truth, the whole thing was a trap that he had set up. Justin understood at once when he saw the way she was looking at him. He smiled and said, don't worry about me. You can also tell Uncle Ian not to waste any money, I know what I'm doing. You guys don't have to worry, this situation will be resolved very soon. After all, if the hunts are in too big a mess, Uncle Ian won't let you marry me. He was dealing with the Hunt Corporation as well as the hunts themselves all for the sake of separating and clearing away the unnecessary and superfluous. Since there was garbage that needed to be cleaned up among the hunts, then that was what he would do. This way, he could also provide Nora, the lazy oaf, with a haven where she could sleep peacefully. Nora curled her lips disdainfully. Suddenly, she said, the way I see it, you're the one who benefits the most from the whole thing. Justin chuckled. He was about to admit to it when Nora corrected herself and said, No, the one who benefited the most is King. He sure is sly and cunning. 
After all, he'd earned $45 billion for nothing. Justin's lip corners spasmed when he heard the words, sly and cunning. He cleared his throat. When he was about to speak, Nora said, forget it, I won't talk behind his back anymore. After all, I still have favors to ask of him. She had favors to ask of King. Justin frowned. Suddenly, he turned Nora's shoulders so that she faced him, and he asked, why favor do you need from King? Chapter 736 Sleeping With Mommy Nora thought about his question carefully. Earlier, she hadn't told Justin about it because it was forbidden for the members of the Imperial League to reveal anything to outsiders. Should they do so, they would be violating the agreement, and she had always been a very rule-abiding person. But since Ian and the others had already brought it up in front of Justin, then Nora felt that there were some things that she could still say. She immediately answered, Old Maddie once told me that if I wanted to fight against the mysterious organization, I must get full support from King. Justin frowned. Why? Nora shook her head. He didn't explain. Justin was puzzled. For a moment, he wanted to acknowledge that identity of his, but when he thought of how he couldn't violate the agreement and reveal his identity to outsiders, he could only keep his silence. Instead, he said, it shouldn't be difficult to get his support. Nora nodded. We'll see. Just focus on your affairs for now. Meanwhile, I will also think carefully about how exactly I should look for leads about the V-16. Clues to the V-16 must be hidden among the things that her mother had left her. As for where exactly that was, though, she hadn't figured that out yet. Justin wanted to say something, but Lawrence had entered again and was reporting to him the current situation in the company. At the site, Nora didn't speak anymore. That night, Nora stayed at the hunts. After Justin hurriedly finished dealing with the company's affairs, the restless man's mind was completely on returning home as quickly as possible. After handing over the company's affairs to Lawrence, he went home straight away. Lawrence couldn't help but ask Sean, is boss busy with something? Why is he in such a hurry? Sean, he kept quiet for a moment. Then, he coughed and answered, perhaps, I guess. Their boss's wife was at the hunts, so of course he would be in a hurry. As far as he knew, even though their boss and his wife already had kids, they hadn't truly done it yet. After all, the last time they did it was because someone had plotted against them. Lawrence, however, frowned. This won't do. He's having a showdown with Herman in a few days. Going by how irresponsible boss is being, I think I'd better go over with the documents and look for him again. Sean stared at how earnestly Lawrence was digging his own grave. After a brief silence, he finally said, if you feel like being sent to some godforsaken place, then go ahead. Lawrence. Justin returned to the hunts, after he finished dealing with all the matters to do with the board of directors meeting, which would be held in a few days. By the time he got home, it was already 9 p.m. According to the children's timetable, they were supposed to go to bed at this time. Nora would also go to bed with Cherry at this time in the past. Therefore, Justin was not surprised at all when he didn't see her in the living room. He went straight upstairs and entered his bedroom. As soon as he entered, he spotted a slender figure lying on the bed. Justin was stunned. He'd thought that Nora would go to Cherry's room and sleep with her, so he would have to think of a way to trick her into coming over. Unexpectedly, she was being so self-aware this time. For a moment there, Justin felt a surge of heat rushing straight into his heart. He suppressed the stirrings in his heart, looked at the woman on the bed, and then went straight into the bathroom. After changing out of his suit, he took a quick bath and then walked out of the bathroom. There was a bit of light on the bed when he came out of the bathroom. Nora was lying on the bed and looking at her phone she was actually awake. To be honest, Justin had been worried when he was taking a bath just now. If Nora fell asleep again like the other time, then should he wake her up? Or should he wake her up? Or should he wake her up? Unexpectedly, the woman was actually waiting for him. The corners of Justin's lips curled into an even bigger smile. Even the beauty mark at the corner of his eye started to shimmer a little more. As he had just taken a shower, his cheeks were a little more crimson than usual, and his chest was also heaving up and down a little more intensely than usual. 
He slowly walked over to the bed and sat right on the edge of the bed beside Nora. The lights in the room were switched off, so the room was dim. The curtains were also fully drawn, and no light could come through. Only the faint night light was shining over. One could see that the person on the bed was indeed Nora. Justin observed her for a while. Suddenly, he chuckled softly and asked suggestively, Are you waiting for me so that we can sleep together? Aha! Uh -huh. Suddenly, a young and tender voice answered him. Justin was taken aback. His line of sight went past Nora, where he finally saw Cherry sitting up from underneath the covers. Cherry, who was wearing pajamas with a strawberry print, was rubbing her eyes. She said cutely, Daddy, we are all waiting for you, yeah. The sensitive Justin caught something amiss in her words. He asked, all. Oh. Yeah, Cherry pointed to the side. Pete and Xander are here too. After she spoke, Pete and Xander also sat up from underneath the covers. Justin, as the corners of his lips spasmed, he heard Cherry go on. She said cutely, a family should lie down neatly side by side together, so let's sleep together. Daddy, your bed is a little too small, though. The bed in Justin's room was a king-size bed. After all, he was a tall man. But now, he suddenly felt like the bed was too big. Otherwise, why would they think that a family of five could fit on one bed? Cherry was even making a request. Daddy, can we custom make a bed that's 120 inches wide? No, Justin refused her request straight away. Then, he said, a custom-made bed doesn't look nice. Besides, with such a big bed, there won't be enough space in the room. Cherry, she, Pete, and Xander stared at the big and spacious 1,080 square feet bedroom, perplexed as to how there wouldn't be enough space in the room. Justin immediately gave an order. Therefore, the three of you are to go back to your own rooms now. He spoke very sternly. Unfortunately, Cherry was not at all afraid of Justin, who was a slave to his daughter. She refused him straight away. No, I don't wanna. She clung onto Nora and said, I wanna sleep with mommy. Pete said, I want to sleep with mommy too. Xander also said, I also want to sleep with mommy. Justin, when he wanted to reply, Nora said, you guys promised that you would fall asleep within five minutes. Four minutes have already passed. As soon as she said that, the three little fellows lay down in unison, covered themselves with the quilt, and closed their eyes obediently. Justin looked at the three children, and then glanced at Nora, who was already yawning. Right away, he knew that once the three children fell asleep, the woman would probably also fall asleep along with them. What else could he do, though? He could only sit there quietly and stare at the few of them on the bed. It was already late in the night. Although Nora's eyes were closed, she was listening to the three children's breathing. When their breathing gradually steadied, it meant that they had finally fallen asleep. Ha, huh, they promised that they would fall asleep in five minutes, yet they took ten minutes to fall asleep. At last, she could finally sleep in peace now. The thought had only just formed in Nora's mind when someone suddenly lifted the quilt. The next moment, a scalding hot body slipped under the covers. Nora, the children have fallen asleep. It's time that we do some adult things. Chapter 737 Nora vs. Justin, who's the winner? Nora was not a little girl anymore. In fact, she had already given birth to three children. She might not have ever really gone into battle with a clear mind, but even if she had never actually done it for real, it wasn't like she was unaware of the process. Moreover, the 25-year-old majored in medicine and practically knew the structure of the human body inside out. As such, she was even more familiar than most with regard to the matter. At the bottom of it all, it was nothing but one's physiology making mischief. Justin's pheromones were just being excessively released, ahem, never mind, she must be overthinking it. While Norris' imagination was running wild, the man's large hand was started wandering all over her body. Norris' nerves, which had always been dull and dense turned sensitive at this moment. Although she was very sleepy, her mind became exceptionally excited. In the dark, she stared at Justin the man had already flipped the quilt open and slipped under the covers. Because the children were present, his movements were very light. The two shared a quilt, and his burning hot body gradually warmed Nora's slightly cold one. 
A sense of restlessness slowly spread throughout her entire body. Seeing that she wasn't rejecting him, the man lowered his head and kissed her on the lips gently. After giving her a peck on the lips, seeing that she still wasn't responding, the man pecked her on the lips a second time, then the third time, until Nora, who found his kisses ticklish, parted her lips and bit his lip. Justin took the opportunity to deepen the kiss. He barged into her territory savagely and went on a rampage. In this instant, the man looked totally different from his usual self. This was the first time Nora was feeling how strong the man was, as well as also the first time she was feeling the terrifying aura around him that seemed to want to swallow her whole. Her cheeks gradually turned scarlet during the kiss. As her eyes remained closed, Justin gradually took control of the rhythm. Then, the man's calloused fingertips roughly rubbed against her skin. Wherever he touched, it was as though an electric current was going through her, giving her a tingly and relaxed feeling. At some point in time, her pajamas had already come off. The two finally faced each other without anything in between them. In the dimly lit room, both Justin and Norris' breathing had become heavy. The two stared into each other's eyes. At last, they had come to the last stage. Justin stared at her, his voice a little hoarse. Nora, are you ready? Nora kept quiet for a while. Then, she answered, yeah. After she uttered the word, when Justin was about to take the last step, a young voice suddenly reached them. Xander asked, what are daddy and mommy doing? Cherry replied, they are probably sparring. Daddy asked mommy if she's ready, right? So they are probably about to fight each other. After all, mommy has always wanted to beat daddy in a fight. Huh, can mommy beat daddy? Shall we help? I don't think so, both of them are experts. It's just that I don't know who is stronger, Xander, let's make a bet, whoever loses will play as support in the game. I'll bet on mommy. Then I'll bet on daddy. Cherry gave Pete, who was sleeping in the middle, a push. She asked, Pete, who are you gonna bet on? Pete. He didn't speak. After two seconds of silence in the room, Cherry spoke again. Pete. Pete replied, I'm asleep. Among the three little fellows, Cherry knew nothing about the relationship between men and women, and even often pretended to be a boy for fun. Xander was even more uninformed about such things. Although he had a high IQ and picked up things very quickly, he had ultimately still been living in and grown up in a basement all this time, so he didn't understand anything at all. Only Pete vaguely understood something. Even so, he didn't quite understand either. All he knew was that his parents had to sleep together before they could have children, as to how exactly the process went, he didn't quite understand. But it was as clear as day that daddy and mommy were making younger siblings for them at the moment. So, what were those two idiots disrupting them for? How was anyone supposed to fight under the covers? They wouldn't be able to move with ease at all, okay. Pete heaved a deep sigh inwardly. Before he could figure things out, Cherry said, Quit bluffing me, Pete. How would you be able to talk if you're asleep? Who are you gonna bet on? Bet on mommy. Mommy is the most powerful. Pete. He silently opened his eyes, turned his head along with Cherry and Xander, and looked at Nora and Justin, who were sharing a quilt. Suddenly, Cherry flipped open her quilt and said, Mommy, how's the fight with Daddy going? I'll come over and help you. As she spoke, she made a move to burrow under Nora's covers. Stop. Fortunately, Nora stopped her in time. She said, we'll be done right away. Just give us a moment. Cherry's big eyes were opened wide as she looked at Nora. She replied obediently, okie dokie. Thus, the couple under the covers started to move, making rustling sounds as they did. Piece by piece, they put their clothes back on the same way they took them off just now. After they were dressed, Nora shot a glare at Justin. Her cheeks were crimson, and she felt like she had broken out in a cold sweat from fright. Then, she found her actions just now simply too absurd. What was she doing with Justin when the children were sleeping right next to them? In contrast, Justin the scumbag looked absolutely calm and collected as he flipped the quilt open and got out of bed. Cherry looked at them. Who won? Justin chuckled. Your mom did. Yay. Cherry cheered with a grin and looked at Xander excitedly. She said, you'll have to play as support tomorrow. Although the support role was important, the little fellows all preferred to lead and play as heroes instead. 
Thus, Xander replied very reluctantly, all right, I guess. After the three of them finished speaking, they all looked at Nora again. Mommy, Daddy, are you guys gonna continue fighting? Nora buried her head into the covers and said in a muffled voice, no, we're not. Go to sleep. Cherry also lay down obediently. Okie dokie. Mommy, if you guys fight again, be sure to inform us so that we can watch, okie. Okay. Xander also hurriedly said, yeah. I wanna win next time. Daddy, fight harder next time. Nora really didn't feel like speaking anymore. She merely asked, didn't you guys already fall asleep just now? Cherry replied, uh-huh, but we were woken up by your fight. 2. 11. Nora's cheeks turned even redder. Fortunately, it was nighttime, otherwise, she wouldn't be able to show her face at all. It seemed that their movements just now had indeed been a little too loud. She covered herself with the quilt, turned over, and went to sleep. Even if someone held a knife to her neck tonight, she wasn't going to wake up again. Justin, he looked down at his trousers. He had no choice but to turn around and enter the bathroom. Cherry asked softly, Daddy, where are you going? I'm going to take a bath. But didn't you already take one just now? I was defeated by your mother, so I need to take another cold shower to calm myself down. Daddy, it's not shameful to lose to mommy. In the end, it was Pete who spoke. He said, Cherry, shut up and go to sleep. Okie dokie. The next day, by the time Nora woke up, the three children had already gone downstairs. She checked the time, it was 10 o'clock. She stretched. At this moment, Justin quietly pushed open the door. When he found that her eyes were open, he walked in. Nora asked hesitantly, why aren't you at the office? Justin's eyes were a bit red as he stared at her, much like a wolf whose prey was right beside its mouth, yet it hadn't eaten it. There was a savage ruthlessness in them. He coughed and replied, oh, there's no difference even if I work from home. Aren't you busy? Nora stretched and sat up. Justin rejected the call from the vibrating cell phone in his pocket. No, I'm not. After speaking, he took a step forward. Nora, the children are downstairs. Practically right after he spoke, there was a knock at the door. Xander called out, Daddy, is mommy awake? Are you guys going to fight again? Justin, Nora, really, really, Cherry also came over. Justin stood up straight, took a deep breath, and reluctantly opened the door. Nora could only go to the bathroom to wash up. After they went downstairs and had a simple breakfast, the three children played with one another. Nora went to the study, intending to study something. Not long after she entered the study, Justin walked in with a plate of cut fruits. There was a ravenous look in his eyes as he asked, Fruits, Nora. Nora. The look in his eyes made Nora panic. But she could understand his feelings very well. After all, a wolf would still be able to bear with its hunger if its prey was out of its sight. However, if the prey was right next to its mouth, then how would it be able to endure it? Besides, she indeed also found it a bit of a shame that things hadn't worked out the night before. She raised her eyebrows and stood up. With a teasing look in her eyes, she replied, I don't want fruits. I want you. Justin's breathing suddenly turned heavy. To be honest, his level of desire in this respect had always been very low. Otherwise, he wouldn't have been single for so many years. After all, with a position like his, if he really had such needs, there was a long line of women waiting for him. However, he wasn't interested in any of them. Nora was the only one he had taken a fancy to. This was especially the case when the woman was going back and forth right in front of him. Coupled with how he had almost swallowed her down, bones and all, the night before, the itch in his heart had become even harder to bear. He couldn't work at all that day. When he looked at the reports, all that flashed in his mind was the way she had looked the night before. He could even feel the touch of her skin lingering on his palm, Justin felt that he would go crazy if he held back any longer. But just as he started striding forward, another knock came from the door. Then, Xander called out, Daddy, are you about to fight with Mommy? Come on, you must win today. I don't want to play as support anymore. 2. 11. Justin's momentum immediately weakened. PFT. 
Seeing his reaction, at last, Nora couldn't hold back anymore. She couldn't help laughing out loud. Her laughter made Justin's dark pupils turn even more resentful. The aggression in the man's eyes slowly dissipated, ultimately turning into a look of resignation. Xander had just joined the family, so he mustn't keep the boy outside. If he did, it would cause negative thoughts to form in the child. He went out and started to comfort Xander. Justin sat on the sofa dejectedly. As he watched the three little fellows playing in front of him, all he could feel was dejection and a sense of defeat. He had never felt this way even when he encountered troubles in business. When he was sighing in silence, he saw Nora coming down the stairs with a coat on. When Cherry saw her, she asked, Mommy, are you going out to work? Yeah, there's something I need to do at the hospital. After Nora spoke, she glanced at Justin and went out. Justin leaned lazily on the sofa. As he listened to the sound of the car starting outside, he couldn't help sighing. That woman was really heartless. The thought had only just formed when his cell phone beeped. He picked it up and looked down to see that Nora had sent him an address. Justin was taken aback. Then, he saw a text message from Nora. This is a villa I bought in suburban New York. Then, she sent a gif of a woman with heavy makeup on holding a tiny handkerchief and waving it at him. Justin stared at it for a while. Suddenly, something clicked in his head. He stood up abruptly, his eyes all lit up. Daddy, where are you going? Cherry asked again. Justin strode out of the house. I'm going to work. To be honest, with regard to her relationship with Justin, Nora had actually long felt that the conditions were already ripe. Taking the final step was only a matter of time. She parked the car, entered the villa, and then reached her arm out behind her to close the door. But before she could close it, a pair of big hands held the door open. Justin then walked in and closed the door. With this, no one can disturb us anymore. Right after he said that, he held her waist firmly, pulling her straight into his arms. Chapter 738 Justin is short of money. On this day, on the outskirts of New York, an amorous and suggestive atmosphere filled Norris' entire villa. A full and satisfied Mr. Hunt held Nora in his arms, his fingers stroking her back again and again. On his countenance was a look of contentment that had never been there before. His dark eyes were so deep and bottomless that no one would dare to look into them. When one glanced at them, it was as if they were looking at the deep and boundless starry sky. The man asked hoarsely, Nora, are you sleepy? Nora was a little tired, though for once, she was surprisingly not very sleepy. She pushed Justin away and got up. The quilt slid down her fair skin. She was very fair, which made the numerous marks and love bites on her body look a little alarming as if she had been abused. At the sight, the look in Justin's eyes deepened again. However, Nora quickly put on her clothes. She pulled her hair behind her and said, I'm not sleepy. Let's go back. Justin sighed silently and leaned against the headboard. In this instant, he really felt like having a post-lovemaking cigarette, but as a doctor, Nora would undoubtedly hate the smell of cigarette smoke, so he suppressed the urge and said, I don't feel like leaving. Nora ignored him and continued to put on her clothes. After she was dressed, she started to walk out. Then I will go first. You can go home later. Justin, why did it feel like the two of them were having some kind of clandestine affair? to the extent that they had to go home at different timings to avoid suspicion. The corners of his lips spasmed as he flipped the quilt aside and stood up as well. Nora had already gotten dressed in a clean and swift manner and was walking toward the exit. Her legs were still a little soft. When she thought of the position they had taken just now, she silently took a deep breath. From the looks of it, it seemed that she should exercise more in the future and stop slacking off. She hadn't expected it to be this tiring. On the other hand, true to what Quinn had said, it was apparent that Justin had indeed been training very diligently every day. Thus, his physical fitness was obviously better than hers. That guy had also exhausted a lot of his stamina just now, yet he looked perfectly fine and was even in good spirits. Thinking of this, Nora pursed her lips. Were the two of them really going to waste so much energy on such unnecessary competition against each other, and end up exhausting each other out? 
She sighed silently and quickened her pace, for fear that staying there would make her develop thoughts of reducing her sleeping time by half an hour for exercise. Justin put on his pajamas. He was planning to chat with Nora for a while, but the sound of the door closing instead came from the door. Then, the car started outside. When he walked over to the balcony, he saw that Nora had already slipped away in the car. Justin. He sighed silently again. At this time, his cell phone rang it was Lawrence. Boss, everything has been settled. I need you to put on a show and play along with the performance now. The situation with the Hunt Corporation shares was at a critical juncture, and Herman was very actively running around in the company at the moment. It probably wouldn't be very appropriate for Justin to behave too calmly at this time. Lawrence said, I bought you an air ticket for a flight tonight. Would you like to go abroad for a vacation for the time being? Justin, he raised his eyebrows, knowing what Lawrence meant. Justin was one of the people standing at the pinnacle of the country. Now that he had encountered a problem, he would undoubtedly have to seek help from some of his foreign business partners. Lawrence was asking him to pretend to go overseas to seek help so that they could bluff Herman and a few certain people among the hunts. This was to prevent some people, who knew him too well and were apprehensive of his mighty reputation, from becoming too scared to come out and make trouble upon seeing his overly calm reaction. If that happened, how was he going to nab all of them in one fell swoop? But, Justin coughed. Okay, get Sean to impersonate me and leave the country. Lawrence was taken aback. Would that really work? Justin nodded. Yeah, we'll do just that. By the time he said that, he had already gone downstairs. He went to the kitchen and took a look, upon which he found that the villa was obviously frequently cleaned. However, there was nothing to eat in the fridge. Thus, he said, buy some food and send it here. Then, he gave Lawrence the address. Lawrence asked, Mr. Hunt, are you hiding a secret lover? Hiding a secret lover? Justin, who found his words interesting, smiled and chuckled. Just do as I say and send it over. What are you asking so much nonsense for? Okay. Half an hour later, Lawrence entered the villa with a bag of food in his hand. Then, he took a look around the area. Before he left, he even asked, Does Miss Smith know that you're staying here? Justin kicked him out the door. After Nora returned to the hunts, she played with the three kids for a while. Soon, it got dark outside and it was time for dinner. However, Justin didn't come back. Nora picked up her cell phone to send him a text message and ask about it. But in the end, before she could send the message, Brenda walked into the house. As soon as she entered, she asked solemnly, Nora, tell me the truth, is Justin in need of money? Nora raised her eyebrows. What's wrong? While she spoke, she typed a few words on the phone and sent a message out, aren't you coming back for dinner? Brenda looked right and left before she finally leaned towards her. Nora, I just got the news that Justin has gone abroad to raise money. He plans to buy 5% of the company's shares at a high price. But he actually doesn't have any money left. Once news of this spreads, it will definitely throw people into a panic. Nora, Justin needed money, then why didn't he say so? Although she was very poor and only had $75 million, at least the Smiths could produce billions of dollars at any time without a problem. While she was thinking about it, Cherry asked, is daddy very short of money? Brenda looked at her and sighed. Seems that way. Cherry said, then why don't I ask my grandaunt for some money for daddy? My grandaunt can lend quite a few hundred. Brenda propped her chin on her hands. What's the use of a few hundred? Aunt Brenda, do you know what I mean by a few, hundred? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. But a few hundred thousand dollars won't be enough either. I already have a few hundred thousand dollars here. I have been playing too hard all these years, and on top of that, I like to shop a lot. Some time ago, I bought around a hundred handbags during Black Friday sales, there's still time for me to return them. Nora, why don't you lend me some money? so that I can pay the balance and return them to save the money for Justin instead. While Brenda was prattling away, Cherry sighed silently and said, my granddad's money comes hundreds of millions of dollars. Brenda, flabbergasted, she stared at Cherry for a while. Then, she sighed, Cherry, you mustn't brag like that. 
whose company has hundreds of millions of working capital. After she spoke, she looked at Nora again. Nora, I called Justin just now, but he has already switched off his phone. He's on the plane right now, so we won't be able to contact him. As she spoke, Nora's cell phone vibrated and Justin's text message reached her. I won't be able to come back for the next few days. I'm someone who's supposed to be on a plane to another country right now. Nora, she blinked and looked at Brenda again. Did you say that Justin is on a plane? Chapter 739 Catching the Adulterous Couple Brenda lowered her head and took a glance. Yeah, he should be on the plane right now. Nora, if Justin calls you after the plane lands, tell him that, if he needs me to sacrifice myself and enter a political marriage for his sake, just say the word. Nora, Brenda touched her face, her lips curling up into a charming smile. After all, given my looks, I'm still worth a bit of money, aren't I? Okay. With her head lowered, Nora continued to send messages to Justin, so, where are you now? Justin sent her a set of GPS coordinates. Before Nora even opened them, she realized that those were the coordinates for the villa she'd taken him to earlier that day. Nora, the corners of her lips spasmed and she heard Brenda asking, Nora, who are you messaging? No one in particular. Nora was not a very good liar, so she calmly changed the subject. Who do you want to marry? Brenda became a little troubled at once. I haven't made up my mind yet. Nora thought that she didn't want to get married, so she was about to talk her out of it when the woman sighed and said, the York boy is a little puppy while the one from the Shaws is a little wolfhound. As for the Smiths, we already have you, so I'm not needed there anymore. Otherwise, the Smith boys would also suffice since they are pretty good looking. What a real dilemma this is. The corners of Nora's lips spasmed. Next to her, Cherry echoed Brenda. Yeah, Aunt Brenda, what a real dilemma this is. It's so hard to choose. Can't you marry all of them? Can't a woman marry several men? Brenda, Nora, PFT. Brenda couldn't help but laugh. Cherry, what a wonderful idea you have. I am saving money right now so that I can take care of many young men in the future. Cherry's eyes widened. I see. Once you have money, you can take care of many young men at once. Quote, comma, dot, quote. Nora felt that there was a high chance Brenda would lead the little girl astray if she stayed here any longer, so she immediately started pushing Brenda towards the door. Okay, okay, hurry up and go out. After speaking, she came back and had dinner with the three children. At night, Nora slept with the three children. For once, though, she actually had insomnia after the children fell asleep. She picked up her cell phone and saw Justin had sent her a message, the food abroad is pretty good, do you want some? I'll treat you to lunch tomorrow. Then came a photo he sent. It was a photo of a steak. Nora had never cared much about what she ate, but when she saw the photo, she actually wanted to eat it. She replied, did you cook that? Yes. So, is Miss Smith willing to come over and have a taste tomorrow? Nora smiled and replied, depends on whether I have time tomorrow. Despite saying that, she put down her phone and turned to look at the three babies who were on the same bed as her. No matter how naughty the three little fellows were when they were awake, they would always be cute and innocent once they were asleep. All of them were sprawled on the bed with their arms and legs spread out. The sight of them lined up in a row made one feel exceptionally blissful. Nora kissed Xander's cheek before she finally lay down. The night passed peacefully. Soon, it was dawn. When Nora woke up, the three little fellows had already gotten dressed and gone downstairs to play. Since Xander's return, Cherry had stopped going to kindergarten. The three of them played together every day. In order to have Xander relax and integrate into the family as soon as possible, neither Nora nor Justin had forced her. After all, Cherry was the family's bundle of joy. After breakfast, Nora left the house and headed to the suburban villa. In the villa, she had lunch with Justin and then took a nap. Nora didn't leave the villa until 5 p.m. when she got ready to go home and have dinner with the children. She couldn't wake up in the morning, so she didn't have breakfast with the children. Since she was with Justin for lunch, then she would definitely have to be with the children at night. For two days in a row, that was how Nora spent her time. This continued until the third day, when she went out as usual at noon. 
When her car disappeared from the parking lot, Lauren held Mrs. Hunt's arm and walked out of the house with Iris. The three of them looked into the distance. Then, they got into the car and instructed the chauffeur, follow her. The chauffeur followed Nora to the suburban villa. The chauffeur stopped the car at the side of the road a distance away. From there, they could smell a fragrance coming from the villa after Nora drove in, as if the occupants were cooking Mrs. Hunt was pulling a very long face. Was. Lauren paused. Then, she sneered and said, here I was, thinking that the relationship between Ms. Smith and Justin was really that good. Ha ha, Justin has only been abroad for two days, yet she is already lonely. To think she has found another man outside. Iris said, no, Nora would never do that. She is not that kind of a person. If not, then can you tell me who it is inside? Lauren spoke aggressively. Surely it can't possibly be Justin, right? Are you saying that the great president of the company is cooking for someone else in there? And being kept hidden like a secret lover? I've already checked, this villa belongs to the Smiths. In other words, this villa is Nora Smith's. Iris. Mrs. Hunt's expression turned even darker. The audacity of her. I didn't think that Nora would actually do something like this. She has utterly shamed the Smiths and the Hunts. After she spoke, she looked straight at the chauffeur and instructed, drive over. I want to see which part about the man inside is better than Justin that she would actually abandon Justin and look for someone else outside. The chauffeur. Iris rejected the order. This is Nora's privacy. It's not appropriate for us to go over and disrupt their peace right now. Lauren lowered her head and said, Iris, what do you mean by that? We are doing this all for Justin's sake. I have already noticed during the past few days that she goes out at a fixed time every day. Additionally, when she comes back, her face is visibly rosy. Ha, huh, has she become bored with Justin just because he doesn't have money anymore? Now, that won't do, the Hunts mustn't have a daughter-in-law like that. Her words brainwashed Mrs. Hunt even further. She immediately said, Yes, go in at once and see who exactly Nora is fooling around with. The Hunts will never tolerate such a daughter-in-law. Chapter 740 beat her at her own game. Iris stared at Lauren and said, This doesn't mean that Nora has a boyfriend. Lauren smiled and said, It can't be Justin inside, can it? He's overseas and he's been gone for two days. I've observed her. When she goes out every day, her face is abnormally red. Why? You've been pure of heart for so many years. Don't you even know the basics? Iris's face turned red. Mrs. Hunt's fingers trembled in anger. She pointed at the door. This woman, how can she treat Justin like this? How can she? Where's Justin? I'll call him immediately. How can she dare to cheat on him? With that, Mrs. Hunt took out her phone and prepared to call Justin. However, before she could press her hand down, Iris grabbed her hand and shouted, Mom. After shouting this, she bit her lip and finally hardened her heart. Mom, Justin is very busy at the moment. Let's not disturb him. Besides, so what if he finds out? Can he still cut ties with the Smiths? Mrs. Hunt was stunned. Iris decided to make things clear. Are you on Herman's side? Mrs. Hunt hesitated. She had watched both her son and grandson grow up. Moreover, her grandson was indeed more suitable to take over the hunts than her son. Although she had helped her son clarify the will that day, it was still the will left by old master. In her heart, she really did not like Lauren's behavior. Furthermore, as a woman, she also felt disdain for her son for abandoning his wife. Mrs. Hunt had always been high and mighty. Previously, she did not like Nora because she had grown up in the countryside. She was afraid that she would be petty like one from a small household and would not be suitable for the status of the Hunts. Now, she understood. Justin was filled with internal and external trouble. Herman was watching him from the inside while Philip was targeting from the outside. At this moment, his grandson had already gone overseas to prepare the funds. If he knew about Nora, would he cut ties with the Smiths? Or would he tolerate it? If he cut ties with the Smiths, he would have no power to compete at all. But to endure it, how sad would a proud person like her grandson be? Mrs. Hunt's eyes turned red from anger. Her entire body trembled as she pointed at the villa. Then here, here. Lauren tried to persuade her. 
Mom, go in and take a look. What if we've misunderstood Miss Smith? Besides, with her behavior, she's not fit to be our hunt's daughter-in-law. Let's go in and catch the adulterer. Iris sighed. There are still three children. Three children. When she thought of Pete and Cherry's innocence and cuteness, Mrs. Hunt's heart softened even more. She took a deep breath and suppressed it. She instructed the chauffeur, take us home. Lauren was indignant and continued to urge, Mom, isn't this inappropriate? How can our Hunt suffer like this? Let's go in and take a look. Mrs. Hunt glared at Lauren and turned to get into the car. After getting into the car, she saw that Lauren still looked indignant. She gritted her teeth and said, get in. With that, her gaze fell on the villa again. Lauren did not dare to disobey her. She could only follow Iris into the car. Lauren was still fuming. Mom, are we just going to let her do this? Then we're too aggrieved. Is our family going to be bullied like this? After the car started, the more the old madam thought about it, the more aggrieved she felt. She said, it's okay. Wait until Justin gets through this. With his personality, he definitely won't tolerate her. 4. Lauren rolled her eyes. He was still going to get through this. Herman was also full of confidence and planned to wait for Justin to personally hand over the hunt's power. The car arrived at the hunt manor very quickly. After getting out of the car, Iris went to Justin's villa worriedly. Lauren looked around and followed behind her. She saw the butler holding a photo and saying something to Iris. Coincidentally, the photo was seen by Lauren. It was a photo of Nora entering the villa. She leaned closer and heard Iris say, suppress the news. Give that reporter more money and tell her not to write nonsense outside. Yes. The butler went out. Iris turned around and saw Lauren. Lauren smiled sarcastically. Why? Are you still helping your daughter-in-law hide the truth? Justin is really promising. Is he planning to live off his wife after being chased out of the house? Iris frowned and stared at her. It's not certain who will be kicked out yet. Don't be too full of yourself. Iris turned around and entered the villa. As soon as she entered the villa, the worry on Iris's face disappeared. She looked out of the door and saw Lauren turn around and leave in the distance. Then, she took out her phone and sent a message to Nora. It's done. She was being followed, and not by an expert either. After all, the people Lauren hired were all unprofessional. If Nora was followed by a person like Morris, it would be difficult to detect. However, against an ordinary person, how could Nora not have noticed? She could not be bothered to take a detour and shake them off to prevent Lauren and the others from misunderstanding. Therefore, she simply went to the suburban villa. Anyway, no one would have thought that the man inside the villa was Justin. After all, Justin's personality was so domineering, it was impossible for him to do such a thing. After a few days, Lauren did show up and called Iris and Mrs. Hunt to catch the couple. Iris decided to play along with them. Of course, Mrs. Hunt and the others could not have entered the villa. Even if Iris did not persuade Mrs. Hunt to leave, she would not have been able to enter. Now, Lauren and the others would probably relax even more. She was right. When Lauren returned home, she went straight to Herman and was reporting to him. Justin is definitely at the end of his rope. Otherwise, Nora wouldn't dare to do this so openly. The Smiths must have thought that he has no chance of winning, that's why they dared to do such a thing. Tisk, at the critical moment, even his fiancée betrayed him. Herman did not like to see her smug face. He sneered. Hey, she dares to betray Justin now. Let's see what she'll do when her family's assets are handed to Justin. As soon as he said this, Lauren said, he might not even want anything. Besides, why do you have to return everything to him? Herman glared at her. Who else can I give it to besides my son? At the end of the day, it's all your fault for being useless. You couldn't even give birth to a son for me all these years. Lauren was instantly rendered speechless. Did Herman hate Justin? Not necessarily. After all, how could there be a father who has no feelings for his child? Back then, he had chosen to take a different path and his son felt that he was wrong and even criticized him. Now, Herman wanted to prove that he was not wrong. He wanted him to see how difficult Philip was to deal with. He wanted him to experience failure and pressure and understand his decision back then. 
As for Iris, he had no choice but to give her to Philip. At the thought of this, Herman picked up the document again. Lauren suddenly came to his side. As she massaged his shoulder, she said, Herman, I still think something's wrong. Justin has been managing the family for so many years, so how could he say no? Furthermore, he's clearly giving you 5% of the shares. Isn't he digging his own grave? Herman sneered. He's too young and thinks that even without that 5%, there are still shareholders he can rely on. But he doesn't know that no one will stand with him in the face of benefits. This time, I gave up so many benefits to win the support of those old men. Hey, I'm going to give him a lesson for messing with Philip and let him know that there's always a sky beyond the sky. When Lauren heard this, she heaved a sigh of relief. Then, she revealed an excited and smug expression. The board of directors meeting would be held the day after tomorrow. At that time, Justin would step down, and she would completely suppress Iris. The winner was the king, and everyone else was the loser. When the time came, she would only be Madame Hunt. No one would remember she was a mistress. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos.